Well, I, I think we are going to get started. Hi, Chris. Thank you for being Hi. here. We barely have a quorum at the moment, so <laughs> we will. But um, we are going to, I think we'll start with, well, hold on. Let me read the things I'm supposed to say. Welcome to, to the City Council meeting. Uh, our meetings are public and you're welcome to join us in person or by watching from the Council's agenda page, Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, or SLC TV. We hope you'll continue to join us in whichever manner you feel most comfortable. Today is a work session only, meaning that there is no public comment, but please join us tomorrow, June 13th, during our 7 p.m. formal meeting to share your comments. And of course, we always welcome your feedback by mail at P.O. Box 145476, Salt Lake City, 84114, or by email at council.comments at slcgov.com, or via our 24-hour phone comment line, 801-535-7654. Written comments received on agenda topics are shared with council members and posted to our website, slccouncil.com. And so we're going to begin our work session. The first item on our agenda is item one, an ordinance related to the Economic Development Lo Revolving Loan Fund for the Salt Lake Sandwich Company, LLC. And it looks like we have Peter and Will and Allison from Council Staff will give us a quick introduction. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this loan, as you mentioned, would be for Salt Lake Salt Lake Sandwich Company. It would be a $100,000 loan at 8.25% interest for seven years, and it would support 3.5 employees. So I'll turn it over to these guys in case they'd like to say more. Allison, thank you. Uh, Council, thank you so much. I'm really excited to present uh, this loan request on behalf of Salt Lake City Sandwich Company, um, a true startup, and uh, very uh, invested in Poplar Grove and the west side. Um, so the focus will be um, providing breakfast sandwiches and lunch sandwiches to working people on the west side of Salt Lake City. Um, I think it's worth noting um, that we encourage startup businesses to um, um, to enroll in entrepreneurial uh, classes with our partners. And Michelle, who's here today, has um, she's in not enrolled but applied to the um, banking on women um, classes provided by UMLF the Women's Business Center in Westminster College. Um, I believe, um, and if you have any questions, very happy to um, answer any questions you have. And the applicant is here. Is this? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, council members, any questions on this particular application? I, I have no question. I just uh, applaud you know, those genuine startups from scratch, that, that's uh, impressive, and also taking the classes, that's uh, so important so that the business succeeds. So I appreciate uh, all the uh, energy that went into this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a, oh, Councilman Pui, I have a general question. Um, I have all the faith in this business, but uh, I do, I like that we're, we are a funding source for true startups, because as a business owner, I know that that's not every, SBA program or not every not all of the programs are available to actual startups when they're when they're beginning their business how does um, What are how does our program work and what does a person a actual startup company business need to provide in order to qualify for our funding and then what happens if the for Whatever reason the business doesn't work out is that are they personally liable or like what are the guardrails and and sort of how do we buffer against some of those risks and support the businesses can you just kind of general uh, not related to this application yeah thank you uh that's a great question those are great questions um so first um so the business provide a number of things including um some personal financials um projections um, but crucially, um, a business plan, the business model and business plan. And so a lot of what we're, um, a lot of our scoring uh, comes off of the kind of the idea and the implementation um, and the thoughtfulness of the business plan. Um, and then go to your second question. Oh, yes, guardrails. Um, that's another great question because we do, we are a lender of last resort and so more risky than, than um, most, if not all, that are out there. Um, <clears throat> but the uh, but the applicants are personal guarantors um, on the loan, and so have a plan. Um, in the unfortunate event that the business did not work out, do have kind of a they do 
in the personal guarantee have a plan on how they'd pay it back without the business in place. Okay. Um, all, as well as a 10% collateral requirement. So um, as an example, food trucks like this will typically, the food truck will be the collateral. And so there's an ability to sell that to pay off the a portion of the loan with the collateral. I see. And in addition, we're very flexible and we'll work with business owners um, to try to, to um, work out something that's fair to both parties. Yeah, and I think that's important with you know taxpayer money going into private businesses, making sure that that's um, a solid investment. But it, do we have any other even like smaller dollar amount grant programs or things that are forgivable? If because like w as that lender of last resort, we want to sort of have a maybe a sweet spot or a balance between actually taking a risk on some businesses that could be very successful, but traditional lenders wouldn't look at I don't right. these are all general questions but right well and really good questions um, so loans of our sweet spot is that hundred thousand especially for startups um, and that's because there are um, like UMLF and MoFi for example two examples of loans that they go up to fifty thousand um, dollars that are they're a little more nimble because like you said it's taxpayer money um, and so there's a there's a very thoughtful um, process that we follow. Um, we want to be responsible stewards. Um, so the, those programs, they're a little bit more flexible and nimble um, for those smaller dollar amounts. And then a few of our other partners, okay. um, Swazo Center, for example, has um, has micro uh, micro grants, uh, mic yeah, micro loans, loans that are okay. um, the smaller amounts that are a lot. Um, they're they're much more nimble and quicker to finance. I appreciate that. Excited Congrats. about the new sandwich company and excited to try a sandwich at some point. Um, Council members, any other questions on this? So this will be on the formal agenda meeting for you all tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Appreciate your um, interest in doing business in the city. All right, we're on to item number two, which is the only other item on our agenda tonight, which is our budget, fiscal year 2023 through 24 budget unresolved issues follow-up briefing. We have a few outstanding things. The goal would be to really finalize everything today so that we can adopt the budget tomorrow. Am I correct on that? Um, which means we have as much time as we need to get through all of those questions. I think we were going to start with uh, something from Councilmember Wharton because I understand that Councilmember Wharton, your time is limited today. So we wanna give you a chance to um, talk about something I think related to Foothill Trails. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. That's what I've been told um, is that we need to talk about that. Um, but I am a little bit confused because um, I had asked um, Kristen Riker from um, Public Lands during the Public Lands uh, portion of our budget discussion about whether um, they would be asking to release funding um, for the Foothills Trails and um, that that would not be part of the request for this budget, but that that would be coming later this summer. So am I incorrect on that? Do we have anyone from staff that can help us clarify? I see Cindy. I, I don't know if maybe Lisa or Rachel happen to know anything more, but um, I bet we have to figure this out in an hour or so. Is this a Mary I, Beth I think, question or? Um, no, I think the question is probably um, for Council Member Wharton. It's, um, whether or not you want uh, funding restrictions to be applied to any of the public lands budget. Um, if you do, because the contingency was first added in fiscal year 22, it is not essentially in effect now. And so if you wanted it to be in effect, it would be something we would add to this year's budget adoption ordinance. And Jennifer, that means the funding at all or the, the restrictions that were placed on the funding in 2022? Either, because it, it, any restriction ends when the fiscal year ends, which is why we actually we adopt a funding our future contingency every single year, because um, just to make sure it continues year to year. I so, see. 
is it accurate to say that the funding for the trails implementation in 2022, we put some sort of guardrails on it, that funding was has never been used, and so it's sitting in an account that theoretically could be scooped up for other purposes or could be reappropriated for that same purpose? I, I think the concern was that there m might have been a misunderstanding about the wording, and so... Um, whether Councilmember Wharton was comfortable with dollars that they're requesting this budget year in their base budget or any additional budget that may or may not be used on trails maintenance. And um, Councilmember Wharton has heard from constituents that even trails, you know, depending on the level of maintenance and the kind of equipment involved, um, you know, there's sometimes concern there. And so um, if you wanted to preserve that sort of reporting, um, you would need to consider that as part of this year's budget adoption. Okay. And because yeah. we had oh. issues with the language last time, we wanted to make sure we had the right language this time. I definitely want to continue um, because even under the language of, from last time, um, from last year, um, the, the requirements that we put on the funding for trails, um, it, it may have been met, um, but we haven't had a presentation from the council uh, or from the parks department to the council, like showing that those things have been met. I have some questions about whether or not they've been met as well. And so I would ask that we um, continue with um, more or less the same language. Um, I personally would also like to see the ma the money for maintenance of those trails also be put in that holding account um, because there's in the past been some so issues about whether um, something is considered maintenance or or building a new trail. And I really think that you know we're we as a council. Um, need to need to see um, what's been done over the last year and what the plan is going forward before we can make any decisions about maintenance um, or expansion into other phases of um, the project. Okay, so if am I understanding it right that there's actually two different amounts of funding that we that this conversation is relevant to one being an amount of funding that is in the proposed current FY24 budget for maintenance. And Councilmember Wharton, it sounds like you would like to to consider even that funding as to what maintenance means, et cetera. Yes. But there's also another amount of funding that was in the FY22 budget and has lapsed and would need to be reappropriated. That's not true. Uh, the, that funding does not lapse. It was a capital improvement project, but oh. I think Councilmember Wharton had the contingency on those funds because of the um, concerns raised by the um, constituents. Okay, so there's a, an amount of funding in the FY22 budget in the capital improvement program, which is still sitting there unused. That's my understanding, although... We need uh, to confirm that. Probably. I mean, okay. yeah. Well, but theoretically, we're talking about two different amounts of funding. I, yes, but I think that the overall topic is one topic. One topic, okay. Mm -hmm. And Councilmember Wharton, Am I understanding your position correctly that you want, you're not yet satisfied with the responses to feel comfortable saying, yeah, go ahead and use all that money. You, you want more clarity about what has happened, what will happen, and et cetera. Um, essentially, that... yes. I'm, I'm not saying that, that the presentations or whatever have been inadequate because I, I um, parks, offered to give me sort of a preview presentation of what um, um, of coming events and what they are hoping to present to the council. And the, the reason that was only a preview is because it they they're, they're really at this point is only an executive summary available of what we asked them to, to go back and do. Um, so we covered the executive summary, but there's going to um, Director Riker told us there's going to be a more in-depth and involved presentation um, that's beyond the executive summary and that is to the full council. Um, and so 
So I, I, the only correction with um, what you're saying, Mr. Chair, is that I'm not saying that Parks hasn't done it. I'm just saying that that we as a group and me individually it. haven't received the, the full presentation and haven't had the full opportunity to ask all the questions we need to ask. And so I think we still need to keep it all, anything that's related to trails maintenance um, or to construction of new trails in the foothills needs to be um, continued, the, the, the hold on those needs to continue until we've had that presentation and until we can decide whether we want to um, move forward, which is what part C of okay. the contingency language was that the, the council authorizes um, moving forward so, after evaluating the results. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, so I'm comfortable saying that as soon as the department and the administration says they're ready to give us that presentation to get it scheduled on a council meeting uh, as quickly as is expedient and, and practicable. Is that the word that <laughs> lawyers use? Um, are you okay with that, Vice Chair? And council members, any other question? Okay, so uh, what I'm hearing is that we'll put both of those things, continue the contingency, but that as soon as the department is ready to come give us that presentation, let's get that scheduled and, and try and get that um, moving as quickly as possible, at least that discussion. Great. Okay. Councilmember Wharton, anything more on that, or do you feel comfortable? with that direction um, no I feel comfortable and and I, I my hope is that we can get that presentation as soon as possible I don't I don't want any delay to be on the council side um, but um, I, I don't think we're causing any of the delay as far as I can understand right now we just need to have that that information and we need to be able to ask those questions and have the public have an opportunity to hear you know all of the work that's been going on um, we hope and since this happened. So I know a lot of people from the public have questions too, so. Excellent. And just putting it out there, I'm, I'm open to another hike with, with the department if that's necessary. <laughs> um, okay, so I think that gets us through that first yep. question. And Jennifer, then, I, we, I know we talked about where we're going next, but I don't remember. <laughs> um, maybe really quickly before we go to the next thing we talked about, could I give a really quick update on where we stand in terms of um, new information? Yes, please. There were two items that um, have been adjusted upwards, which is great in terms of revenue um, since the last time we talked last week. Um, the uh, new growth figures for from the state tax commission were updated and uh last time we talked you had about three hundred and ninety thousand dollars more in new growth than when was in the mayor's recommended budget and as of this morning you have eight hundred thousand dollars more um than is in the mayor's recommended budget to um to spend essentially for new growth then um the spend or or to not save. spend or save. or save yes sorry I should have both are options that. yeah um, the other item that has been updated is the actual amount of CIP dollars that you can recapture. I think we talked about this briefly in the last session that um, the council has historically asked the administration to review any CIP account that's over, that's older than three years old. Uh, we had a placeholder figure of about a half a million dollars of CIP that you could recapture. Um, since the administration's been working on it, they've confirmed that that figure is 865,234. And those are dollars that are coming from CIP, but because they are originally, they originated in the general fund, you could either choose to spend them on CIP projects or spend them to balance the general fund or save them. So um, we've listed that as a potential revenue in the updated version of the tracking sheet that we sent to you guys earlier today and that it's printed out in your places. So those are the two updated items from revenue. Um, I think the next item we were gonna go to is the um, air quality program. The administration sent some additional information today um, kind of outlining what they believe are sort of more specifics about the program and the justification for the FTE. Um, just answering some of the, wanting to answer some of the council's questions that were raised in recent discussions. So I don't know if um, a question and answer format is more appropriate or I don't know that they're prepared with the presentation formally, um, but um, we did forward that information to you guys in email today. So council members there, this has been, the, the, I mean, this might be the biggest un resolved issue that we have f uh, for this budget year is the funding for the air quality initiatives program, including, 
you remind us the numbers. There's a, an amount for an FTE, and then there's an amount for program right. funding. And it, was it something like 196 for the FTE? 96 and then, for the FTE, and an additional $230,000 for the program, which adds to the base budget they have of 250000 I think that's line 123 okay. on your tracking sheet. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, is anybody not clear on this? Has anyone not been at least brought up to speed on what the question is? Councilmember Baltimore? No, I, I just barely saw okay. the, the answer, so the email that you guys sent. So, um. so I think the really high level summary is there has been some questions about um, those air quality incentives, whether or not they are the correct incentives or the think programs that we want to fund or um, if there are different programs. And I think there has been discussion back and forth about both sides of that. Um, and the question is, do we have enough information to say, yes, these programs are the right things and we want to fund them now? Or do we want to, I guess the other alternative, well, I guess there's three. The other alternative would be to put the money in for instance, a holding account and have take a little more time to decide whether or not those are the exact types of programs that we want to use or just say no altogether. And I haven't heard anyone saying they want to say no altogether to the funding and just cut it. But I, I'm not sure if where we are on whether or not we approve it now or we hold on to it and have some more discussion about the department. Open it up for discussion. Councilman Dugan. Mr. Chair, thank you. And I appreciate, and I appreciate the uh, response from the uh, administration on the incentive programs and uh, the vision of using that program. And I think the last discussion we had, we were first concerned that we didn't have a lot of funding. And uh, second, we were kind of focused on one sliver of these incentive programs, and that was more just on the uh, uh, e-bikes. Uh, but there's a lot more to this program than just just e-bikes. That's a that's a slice of it, and I think part of this uh, is important for the city in general, and also uh, one of our priorities of air quality and the health of our uh, residents. That we do have an additional uh, FTE to manage this, because if we don't have that person, then we're really gonna we're gonna uh, set it up for failure, and uh, and there's a lot of moving pieces in this program that need a lot of attention and they're uh, across the board. E-bikes is just one slice of it. We had some concerns and I think those concerns are valid about uh, theft and parking and uh, where you can store them. And I think those are important ideas, but there's also probably some other uh, important uh, aspects of this program that will uh, be valued across the city that we should, uh, we should really kind of embrace because this does allow us to, uh, take care of our air quality at all levels and in, especially in places where it's really impacting our, our locals. So Councilman Dugan, are you in favor of, I, I'm taking from your comment, you're not in favor of cutting it. Are you in favor of approving it all now? Or? I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in favor of approving it now with the FT because without that person to uh, take care of all these uh, programs, we're, uh, we're going to set it up for failure. And again, just these are multiple slices, and they also, it's more of, uh, it's, it's not all set in stone right now. There is some development in that area, so. I think Councilmember Pichero had a comment, and I see Councilmember Wharton, and then Valdemoros. Please, well, everyone. everyone. And Pui. Okay, everyone wants to talk about this. Go ahead, Pichero. Um, I really would appreciate the holding account. Before anyone lights pitchforks and comes for me, which tends to happen when I take a counter-majoritarian view here, um, I am not saying no to this program at all. And I acknowledge the very, very, very big issue that is our air quality and our environmental health. What I'm not sure about is the lane. And it, if you look at it, this is analogous to the homelessness crisis. And I have been very well convinced by very good policymakers that we get out of our lane when we do too much. We need to spend our resources strategically. This is a crisis. We are at a point where we could potentially find this valley unlivable. Our responsibility is grave. And so the idea that we would 
not be as strategic in making sure this money is spent in the single most effective way that is non-duplicative, that is impactful to our residents, is really important to me. And I don't feel now in my second year doing budget that I've ever gotten my feet under me as to where the lane is for this. What is our unique contribution? Are we sure that this money is being spent to its greatest impact? You'll notice that I've backed off on some of my policies that I'm proposing around, that I came in guns blazing on around homelessness because I've been convinced that if we create a cooperative scheme for addressing it, that is the best outcome for all people. The only difference I can see between this and the homelessness crisis is that the homelessness crisis impacts are more quarantined geographically and to certain subsets. The air quality crisis does in indeed impact all people, all places, no matter what. I understand the gravity of it. I am not saying cut it. I am saying let's placehold it and let's make sure we understand our internal strategy, soup to nuts, top to bottom, front to back, that I understand it. I'm sure sustainability does, but I'm not sure I've ever had it communicated to me in a way that I understand my legislative role. I understand that clean energy things are organically developing, but we need to protect legislative processes in all of those. I wanna make sure that we understand this more fully and that we are getting bang for our buck when we do this. Okay, thanks Councilman Pichero. Councilmember Wharton was next. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so, um, I, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to um, participate in the discussion last week, um, but for me, this feels like an extension of um, a lot of the efforts that Salt Lake City has led out on on air quality um, when it came from um, when the city first started moving all of our fleet to hybrid vehicles and then electric vehicles when we um, pr started providing free parking for um, for um, a hybrid and electric vehicles, installing charging plugs, um, and us investing more in additional UTA routes, us investing in first to last mile transit. Like to me, this makes sense as an extension and, and builds on the success of our previous programs in those areas. Even our, our buyback programs for or our trade-in programs for yard tools from um, from gas power to electric. Um, to me, this you know makes a makes a big difference. Um, so I feel like we're building on the success of what we've seen in Salt Lake City, but we're also looking at these other cities. Um, and you, you know, I I don't love to give props to Denver over Salt Lake City ever, um, but in this instance, the program in Denver. I think has been pretty transformational in terms of their e-bike program. I know that it would make a difference for a lot of residents um, in in my district, um, where um, and, and I'm talking about the e-bike program specifically on this on this point. That um, you know, if you have a family with um, you know a young child or something, um, or if you need to go to the grocery store. For a lot of people, taking a bike is a non-e-bike is, but they want to, um, not but not being able to do that because of the impracticality. An e-bike makes a huge, huge difference for that. Or being able to get to work and then get home, an e-bike would make a big difference for that. So for me, I don't see this as us stepping out of our lane. I see this as us um, just kind of continuing to go down the lane that, that we're in. Um, and I know that, you know, when, when I'm talking to residents, among the top things that they want us to resolve as a council that they want us to work for, work on are that housing and homelessness issue and the air quality issue. And it, it's so hard because our hands are so tied in a lot of areas to address air quality directly. And I feel like I have to go back to them again and again and say, we, the reason we can't do that is because of, you know, um, whether it's federal or state or whatever um, issues that don't allow us to regulate car exhausts or or, in, uh, or, or traffic to an extent that that implicates you know highways or state roads or whatever, um, 
we can't emission standards. We can't limit those things. Um, we don't have that authority. So to to incentivize uh, um, programs and to help coordinate and be a resource for residents in areas where we can significantly cut back, um, where we can invest in alternative modes of transportation, to me, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and we're just continuing down the road um, and in the lane that we've been in for, for a while. Um, so I think in terms of the bang for our buck that we could get from this program, um, it makes sense to me. Um, and um, I, I would like to see us support it and make any adjustments we need to as we go forward. Um, I, so that's, that's what I would advocate for. Thanks, Councilmember Wharton. Uh, Councilmember Valdemaros. Thank you. Um, I think if I if I just look at into this um, program or or this program that we want to um, this service that we want to um, provide, I guess the question is like, do we want to provide a service of this kind where somebody is managing these two things, and is does this merit a full time position, and um, if we, you know, follow the mission statement, which is reduce, one of the things is to reduce pollution and slow climate change and what the mayor said that she, we need to do everything we can so that we can put some of these um, tools into residents, then uh, to the residents, then to me it's an absolute, absolute yes, like let's do it. At the same time, because I, from what I heard from last meeting when um, there was, you guys were saying that there are programs like this at the state level that we can leverage or maybe we just help a little bit, but we don't do it all or all of it ourselves. Um, then that's what, the, to me, the question is like, okay, so there's two things that they might be managing. Do we need a full time or can it be um, just for this one time to manage that? Or if we do it a full time, then can we add on to what they're doing right now? Basically, what I'm trying to say is, Two programs, I feel like um, that's not a lot that this person is in. No offense to sustainability, I, I, I don't know how it works, but I feel like if we're gonna have a full-time position, perhaps they can do another program as, a, as well of the like, or two more programs so that we get more bang for our buck. Um, if not, then let's, let's fund it, but maybe not a full-time position. Um, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, for one year, a one-time thing and see how it goes. Thanks. Councilor Pui. So, I, I, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, um, you know, I, I think, uh, as uh, was uh, mentioned, obviously I support the idea of, of uh, this grant. I, uh, you know, using Denver as an example on this is fantastic. They, they have tried this and uh, the city is investing a lot on uh, bike infrastructure, safe bike lanes and whatnot. So I feel like it's a big deal. I. Uh, I also want to make sure that the city is very much aware of how the equity issues on this, and I, I will not hesitate uh, on trying to get the funds back uh, if it's not implemented correctly. Uh, that is a very big deal for me. Uh, but I also want to, uh, you know, amplify something that Councilmember Petro mentioned. But you know, it's funny that in some ways we're trying to mimic Denver and their successes. Uh, on this issue, but at the same time, we're trying to stay away from the success of Sanction Campi that Denver has. Um, and, uh, and we are sort of, many of us that are in this table and, and, and the other side are saying that this is the state's role when we're talking about sanction camping or helping on that. But in this case, even though that this program or some of these programs were run by the state before, uh, now they're saying that we should do more on this. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, I, I, I agree that Salt Lake City has taken a lead role on these issues, but uh, we, we need to be sincere with ourselves uh, about all of this conversation and how it sounds uh, outside the city hall. Uh, if we're going to do one, uh, which I think it is a great program, we need to also tackle um, some of the biggest problems we have in our streets every day. Um, uh, and I believe that we need to put it in context when we're talking about uh, bikes. I love the idea, love this, uh, would love to support it. Uh, but 
let's uh, let's uh, let's remember the bigger conversation here when we are using Denver as an example. Um, again, I'm supportive of this. I think this is a big deal. Uh, let's make sure that it's equitable and done correctly. Um, but yeah, just leave that out there. Okay. Thanks, Councilmember Pui. I guess uh, since everyone shared their thoughts, I coming in today was in support of a holding account for the full amount of the program funding plus the FTE. Uh, I think I could, uh, and I, I had similar questions about whether or not e-bikes is the highest and best use of the that kind of an incentive. Um, and I am also concerned about the equity issue. I would love it if we could make it income qualified. Who, who gets the incentive for the e-bike? Because I think there are people who can very easily afford an e-bike and the $500, I don't, first of all, I don't even know the level of the incentive or the rebate. Do we, do we know that? It, has that been clarified? Um, because not knowing exactly how much money we're giving to this program, it's hard for me to say who this is gonna benefit, right? I, um, I can see a lot of people that could very well afford an e-bike if they get $500 being, that might encourage them to purchase the e-bike and maybe that's good. But for individuals who actually need it to get around and for whom this would really help benefit their life, a $500 incentive may not be enough. So it, to me, that's the question. And rebates often are not enough. Retroactive funding isn't often not enough. Yeah, and is this point of sale? The most, is this, right, the yeah. most socioeconomically challenged to be able to purchase. Um, so I guess maybe drilling into a little more who is actually going to benefit from the e-bike incentive and how we make sure that it's the people that really need it the most. Um, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do any kind of incentive for people that have, have enough money but maybe just need a little bit of push to become a little more green, but I want to make sure that the majority of the money is going to people who, but for the incentive, could not afford the e-bike. It sounds like there, there's some people ready to... Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for all of your thoughtful consideration on this. We really appreciate it. Um, we, we don't have the program fully designed because that will take stakeholder engagement. Wait, can you, Sophia, can Sorry. you say your name for the record? Oh, Sophia Nicholas um, in the sustainability department. Thank you. I just wanted to, to note that, yes, we are planning to design it so that there is an equity component in, and an income qualified component. Um, Denver's program, if we were to model it as similar to Denver's, they had a $300 point of sale discount for um, anyone. And then um, they dedicated, I think it was twelve or $1,400 for income qualified. And that can cover, um, depending on the bike that's chosen, that can cover um, all of it for certain models. Um, so we really, I mean, if we would really appreciate your guidance on that and this, if, if you do want all of it to be income qualified or just making sure that, um, and we were already planning to, to do that, but um, appreciate any guidance you have in this conversation. Um, I will say that, that part of why we haven't kind of designed the whole prog program out yet is because it will take a fair amount of engagement with the community, with our community-based organizations, um, with our fellow divisions as well. And so um, I will say that I've already been talking with Bike Utah, with UCARE, um, we've talked with Denver, we've talked with um, starting to have conversations with bike shops. So we would just really uh, go down that path and, and do a lot more of that and, and would be happy to present our plan to you if that's what you'd like or um, just engage council uh, however you would like to be engaged. Council members, any follow-up questions on the income qualification and or equity piece specifically? In terms of equity, any, hidden, any credence given to the storage and weatherized storage options? Yeah. Um, I think... I don't think it's necessarily something that that we can say. Oh, you have to have storage in order to be eligible for for the the um, the program. But it is something that we've. I went to the Bike Utah Summit last week, week before, and we spent three hours talking about e-bikes. <laughs> so it's definitely something that people are thinking about. I, I loved your idea of look, exploring public-private partnerships for places that, that could potentially host lockers. Um, 
I do know that uh, Denver and some of the other programs, they, as part of their, their uh, program, they included high quality locks, helmets, lights, things like that so that people did have a way um, to, to make sure that they could maintain and, and safely lock up their bikes. But we'd be happy to follow up with, with Denver as well as other cities and see if they have any other lessons learned for us on those issues. Well, and to be clear, I don't think it should be a condition of them qualifying. I think it's an incentive. My neighbors, who are a refugee family from Somalia, who live multi-generationally in a three-bedroom house, won't let their kids have bikes because there's no place to store them. And with e-bikes, I have to imagine that weatherproof storage becomes even more important than for just traditional bikes. So those, those two elements, I think, actually for the people who, among whom we're attempting to create a bike culture are actually even more important. And your partnerships probably are going to have to go to the CLC coordinators at Mountain View, at Meadowlark, at the places that serve our refugee communities deeply. Um, because Bike Utah is is good at what they do, but th you're literally cre try attempting to create a lane that hasn't been created if we do this correctly. So. Yeah, I think it's a great idea to talk with those CLCs. So it might not be an either or, it's a but both and. We need to, if we are investing in this, we also need to invest in secure storage for individuals for whom locks locks are not enough especially with an el nino coming in another wet winter that's a great way to make sure either pawn shops have higher caliber stock or to make sure we have dead bikes sitting in people's lawns next summer mr chair i, I want to put it on perspective for those that don't you know this is happening a lot on uh, not only on the west side you know but i tell you from experience it happens a lot on the west side i mean i drive by you know, uh, the intermodal hub every day, and there is a camp right there right now that has probably 50 bikes. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a thing, uh, it's a problem, uh, and we need to make sure that that is also addressed um, because it, we are, it, there is a hole in the system uh, about bikes and uh, how we enforce or not uh, about those. So I just want to just uh, uh, amplify the, the, the concern that Councilmember Peter has. Thank you for bringing those perspectives from yeah. from that community. And, um, and I'll just say too that um, we really appreciate that. We've been talking with community members as, and, and these organizations as well, and we would not just be running the program without any sort of um, other conversations internally with, with other departments. So we have an electrified transportation steering committee, and we would run um, this program through one of those subcommittees so that we could be coordinating with transportation and planning and um, other relevant departments to start looking at some of those other issues that we need to that have come up as well. So, uh, Petra? In terms of procedure, Cindy, would this potentially run as like an EDLF grant program where it would come back before us for final approval or is it completely separate? You, you could. Um, make it contingent on it coming back once the program is developed. Um, it, it wouldn't naturally come back once the funds are appropriated. Well, we, would, we wouldn't be approving every application like we do for EDLF. No, but we, ha we do large swaths like the ACE fund, you know, things like that where I we do, I don't know, do we Yeah, you would, you would approve, we'd approve the concept Arts Council? I don't know. We, we, do, we do some in large swaths. They, <laughs> they, you, yeah, CDBG, you, you know yeah, what I'm Yeah, so there's the model where you, where you do an appropriation for like ACE, and that then is just entirely administrative after that. So this is more along those lines. So if you do want to have more uh, opportunity for input as they have, as they develop their program, then you can just ask for it to come. I don't think I would want that level of oversight, but oh. especially while we are attempting to understand more clearly sustainability, their role and their lane, I don't think it would be a terrible idea for us to have another touch point as a batch to say this is the RFP or this is, you know, who we something like that would that would allow us to preserve some legislative role in it. Mr. Chair, I, I agree because that's part of the development of the program, right? So because you don't want to micromanage down to the smaller level, but give them here's the framework, here's the parameters. Maybe you walk through the first couple ones just so you have an idea that hey, what we said and what we actually uh, 
thought is happening now are, are congruent with each other. So, but it, it is a. It I don't is, even think you'd need to like look at the first grants or anything. It, All you'd ha need is, could you tell, yeah. give us an update on what your program looks like? Yeah, what's like? your program and what are the, what are the uh, criteria for that? Uh, and that and again, that that it's a wonderful way to do it, but you have to have the funding for for all the aspects of it you can't just piecemeal it and hold off on part of it because you'll never get there you'll always just you're, you're going to succeed in failing okay councilor wharton thanks um, i i want to address the like apparent like inconsistency um with this and the the sanctioned camping um that the council member who raised because i think that's a valid like, um, you know, point that would come up that people would wonder. Um, and, uh, uh oh, something loud is about to happen where I am. So hold on just a second. Sorry. Something loud is about to happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds fun. Um, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, so, <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, sorry, I just didn't want to, um, I was, you weren't going to be able to hear me. Um, anyway. So that was much um, less disruptive. I, I think that um, we're talking about, you know, we're being asked to put aside um, 96000 for this program that's going to replace a program that we know is going away and um, is going to create a new program with e-bikes that, um, I hear the administration saying is going to be sensitive to income um, and is going to address the security concerns and whether it's, you know, a wealthy person that gets, uh, or I shouldn't say wealthy, whether it's a person of um, average income that gets, you know, $200 off of a bike or someone that deeply needs um, additional support and they get maybe $1,500 off a bike the benefit it benefits everybody because we're all it's one less car um you know in theory that that we're all benefiting from um and we get all of that for ninety six thousand with the sanction and and we also have staff that are coming to us and telling us that this will make a big difference and we have um a, you know a department that's saying this is what we're going to do to roll this out and make sure that it's a success on the sanction camping like that's in addition to all of the money that we're talking about adding into housing this year, creating this new ADU funding program, um, and, and all of the other things that we've done every single year for the past several years to address um, homelessness in different models from the, the village to switch point to, you know, all of these other programs that we've done recently that have cost, you know, a significant amount more. Um, and then now going, I think the request that I heard last towards the sanction camping was 500,000. And I'm still not, I'm still in the same position I was before. I'm in, I want to be persuaded. I want to hear that presentation. I want to believe that that is going to go towards something great, but I haven't gotten any additional, any additional information about what we're going to get with that 500,000 versus asking the administration what we're gonna get for this 96,000. So for me, that's the difference. And it also is going back to residents and saying, you know, if they're saying, okay, housing and homelessness is one of our biggest issues. Here are the things that we did for that this year, the things that I just listed. Um, when residents ask me, what did you guys do for the budget this year in air quality? I, I don't know that we have something that we can, that we can add to that other than the sustainability lens um, that we've asked departments to do from the previous year, which I think is going to help. But where in the budget are we putting our money where our mouth is on air quality? Um, okay, we we are going to talk about the sanction camping funding. Um, I wonder if uh, uh, Councilman Warren, I don't know when you have to leave, but do we want to pivot to that and come back to sustainability. I feel like I could or, make a pivot if you want to. Do we, do we need to make a straw poll on this one? I think we should. Let me take a stab at the sustainability. Hold on. Never mind. I was going to sneeze, but I didn't. Um, 
Uh, let me take a stab at this. I'm <laughs> something here. loud was about to happen. Something loud was about to happen, but it didn't in my case, and that's so so unsatisfying. Um, let me uh, take a stab. I I'm hearing that there's not opposition to the program expenses, the incentives that people are comfortable with. That I hear that there may be some need for us to match that, or at least come to some. Um, some additional funding or maybe take a piece of that off for the security and the storage piece and I don't know exactly how that works um, or just create the public private partnerships that establish it I don't care if it's city funds or that, if someone comes in and does it that is that, that needs to be part of the program but that and whether it. that means we need to increase the money so that we can do both or it means we need to just carve off some of this I'm seeing 580,000 right 250 from ongoing and 230 more so 480,000 um, whether a portion of that needs to be diverted to not just the incentives but the security and storage piece but that that sounds to me like it's making council members comfortable with the program funding is yes. that fair that, yeah, that is that's fair, fair. I, okay and let's I still prefer I still prefer a holding account and us taking our time on it even with the program funding okay so councilmember Petro's still in support of the holding account and no, no, all I'm going to say, if we're going to ask the, that program to do also what Councilmember Petro wants to do with the storage, then for sure we need a full-time person. Like, that, I mean, you can't just you know do this one time and all work on the program plus the storage plus something else that you guys can come up with. I mean, you know, like so. This is where if we're going to do that, like, well, if we are going to do that and, and direct them to do that, then I'm for the full-time position yeah. then. And I have a hard time. With, you can't do that with it in the holding count. So you have to right. find, because that's part of the development is that it's, this is going to develop into that program. And that's that's why you have it at this point. You find it at this point so they can do it start, start July 1st instead of give us a program that uh, they have to expend money that they don't have for that program. And that's the um, point I want to, I, I think we should tackle next is that FTE. I think I'm still not a hundred percent sure that i'm ready to approve the fte but maybe we have some information we can get right now about what else that does because if it's four hundred and eighty thousand dollars of program funds and ninety six thousand dollars for which i think is only for 10 months of the fte to administer that that feels like a large person like the overall amount is five hundred and six hundred thousand dollars and twenty percent of that whatever 18 percent of that is going to just administration of that that feels like a big overhead and i'm wondering what else that fte can to council member valdemoros's question what else can that person be doing because it doesn't seem like we need a full-time ongoing fte for that amount of money and it seems like we may be able to do it either in a leaner way or with partnerships with other nonprofits or that that FTE could do some additional things besides administer those funds? I will say that we were also, um, we have the indoor air quality um, tools that are also part of this budget. So the um, filters and the um, purifiers as well. Um, for the last three years, we have only had the 250,000 that we've been using to match with the state funding for their program. Um, we've learned a lot through working with them. They have spent a tremendous amount of time on that program and I think we very much know that we we really can't do much of any of these incentive programs without our own full-time employee because it, it just takes so much even to manage partner uh, relationships there's contracting there's all of the procurement processes there's I think for us the full-time employee is the primary request and then if you wanted to do anything more with the actual incentives money we could have that conversation Okay. Yeah, I think we and, keep and on. And similarly, sorry, just, just what you said, um, Council Member Dugan, just about the, the holding account doesn't allow us to really do any work to answer those questions before we come back to you. But happy to right. take other, it, any, any guidance you have. And realize the e-bike e is just one slice, again, of the whole program. So there's a lot more things going into that FT than just e-bikes. Which think is why I still want the holding account, because I feel like we fixated on one of them, and I'm not convinced that we're not doing non-duplicative things that are out of our lane. Yeah, and, and that might be a matter of I haven't been able to go deep enough, and if so, I apologize. But if I'm going to spend our constituents' money on things, I want to make sure I'm spending it in the most powerful way. And 
like I'm, I'm really struggling not to feel frustrated because we say things like one more car off the street, but when it comes to camping, one more person off the trail would be really impactful to us. And it does feel like because this is something that impacts all socioeconomic classes across the city, this one is getting a pass on the idea phase, whereas we have to prove efficacy to even attempt to catalyze a response to homelessness in the city. And so I'm really struggling with why this one gets a pass and why we go, yes, let's just go with it without examining it for effectiveness and non-duplicative things when other, other things need to be examined similarly. So I, for me, I acknowledge there's a confluence and I will deal with my own internal issues around that, but I don't think we're doing the same due diligence on this program and the way we spend public dollars as we are in other places. Okay, Councilor Wharton, I saw your hand. Well, just I, I, I see and hear your frustration, and, um, but I feel like we're doing, um, I mean, it's not just the 500 for the sanctioned camping, right? There's a bunch of other things that we're funding to address housing as well. And I, I don't see duplicity in this program or us going beyond our lane. So maybe if you could speak to what you see as duplicative or what you see of us as this going beyond our lane, that would help me understand better. Because I see, well, and I, I think see that's what I'm of, saying. We've because of the nature of budget season, it feels like we haven't clearly defined the lane like we have for other departments. And so, we have we've all gotten fixated, me included, on the e-bike element of it, and we haven't examined it to make sure that this is being spent as effectively as possible. So for me, a holding account would buy us a little more time to make sure that this money is in fact going to be impactful, that we are in fact giving our sustainability department a mandate that is doable, and that we are in getting the best outcomes for our constituents. So I'm I'm hearing. What I'm hearing is Councilmember Petro is asking for a little more time for us to have the discussion. Right, the holding account is not a denial. It's an exam a moment to go deeper to examine to make sure we are ta taking on something that is doable and efficient and effective. And I think also a um, an impetus for the council to actually have that policy discussion that I think we've been needing to have for many for at least as long as I've been here of what uh, sustainability department what the mandate is and how we want that mandate to be carried out so that we can have, because I think there's enough question that I've heard just from either council to staff level or administration to, to legislative branch level about what the role is that I, 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 I guess where I'm landing is I'm also, I feel like the time would not be wasted for us to hold on this for a minute and have that deep policy discussion so that we can all as a city be on the same page, hopefully we end up there about this is what they do, and so there's no more questions about this there is or is not the role of this department. Um, and I think I would hope we could have that very quickly and that we could, I mean, this whole conversation could, could be avoided next year. We'll have the same conversation again next year if we don't set a policy direction as to this is what we want. The, do we agree with what's written in that book about the mandate of the department, and is that clear enough? I have a question for, for Council Member Petra. Would it help you with if, or from what I understand, it's like, hey, I need more clarification on what this person is going to do. More I'm not specifics. so concerned with the person. I actually could get my head around a person okay. more easily than other people, it sounds like, because I see our city staff. There is more than enough work for every one person to do. Adding someone, especially at that rate, is not a huge concern to me. Okay. What I'm concerned about is that when we develop programs and sustain them and implement them and make them dependent on the general fund, that we are doing so in a way that protects our constituents the most. Now, we've talked before about the possibility of let's use lobbying energy and dollars to make sure the state is doing what they can do and, that, and then we take on the next part. Until we've had a chance to talk about that, I don't feel personally like I'm in a place where I can vote in good faith for this. It is not, it's, it's nothing except that this budget season is full of everything. We, we tend to fixate on you know trees and, and forests here. It's always hard to pick which one we're focusing on. And we, we've, this has kind of been an organically developing kind of a pun intended there, department. <laughs> and so we need to, it feels like a strategic moment 
for us to pause and say, are we still doing what we said? I mean, we've watched the Clean Energy Initiative come forward, and they've kept up with that. But these things e evolve in ways that are so just natural to the environment around us that we need to make sure that we are putting legislative processes in at every place that it can be, and that we're safeguarding our constituents' money and health through what we approve or don't approve here. And I just don't feel in good faith that we've had the moment to do that on this particular issue. It's a lot clearer when it's an engineer or a building permit person because those, those lanes are so clear and th their work is so clear. This is something where we could get mission drift and if we go a, a mile wide and an inch deep, we all still die from lung cancer. Okay. Rachel. Thank you, Mr. Rachel Otto, Chief of Staff. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thanks to the council for taking a closer look at this and giving this so much time and consideration. Um, just a couple of things that I want to make sure to try to clarify. One, you know, we understand the desire by the council, and it's a desire that we share to make sure that we're getting really clear on sustainability's mission, and and really kind of rounding that out in ordinance so that we do have, you know, um, all of the all the buy-in and all of the you know clarity around what the department does. That said, you know I think the administration feels very confident that giving residents the tools to improve air quality in their own homes and their own lives is part of the mission and will remain part of the mission. And there's very little that the city itself can do in terms of regulating air quality. You know we don't get to regulate you know big industry. We don't really get to do a lot aside from look at clean energy and giving air giving air quality tools to residents. So we feel confident that this isn't a, a, a program that creates any kind of uh, duplicity. Um, with the state, we've worked for the last three years with the state on their air quality um, improvements with a lawn exchange program. They're not doing that anymore. No one's doing these programs. You know, there's not, there's, there aren't, the, the bike collective isn't doing e-bike programs. We are working with the county on indoor air quality work, um, and I think we'll continue to explore all of those relationships in terms of air purifiers, HVAC upgrades, those sorts of things. We're not going to. We, we are really not trying to mission creep here. Um, we feel very confident that this program wouldn't mission creep, and you know, I mean, I think that said, with the contingency funds, it um, would help us. I think if the council goes that direction to get very clear around what you want us to come back to present to you. And it would also be you know, incredibly helpful if I think the council would be willing to fund the FTE without, condi without a contingency. And then we can come back with the program better built and, with, you know, and then get your final um, thoughts on the okay, program wait. itself. I, I might have just heard the exact opposite of what it, like, <laughs> where I was going. You're saying that if we have some contingency you would prefer that we fund the FTE but put the program money in the contingency? That, okay, it's, that's the exact opposite difficult. of where I was thinking, but. Yeah, it's, it's very hard for us to get the work done. done. Without the, without it feels the like, it, to me, that feels okay. like seed money to give us a strategy behind a good idea to invest in. That, okay, so I actually would be a lot more comfortable I'm, with that. I support that too. Okay, so I, I'm be, hearing, I'm, 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 I'm also, Thank you for that uh, option because uh, I was pushing hard for the whole thing. But you need the FT to, to help us get there because we don't. Without the FT, we don't have the man, we don't have the labor forces to get to the problem. So you have to have the FT. That's why I was saying fund the whole thing. But if if you're concerned about the program itself and the development and the and where it's tracking, you you got to have the person to help you get there. So I'm I'm in favor of going that route than the flip. So that's, yes, that's totally the opposite of what I was thinking. But does someone want to present that as a straw? So I, I present that as a straw poll is that we fund the FTE with a contingency on the uh, program uh, funding. The and can we clarify whether it's the two hundred and thirty dollar, two hundred thirty thousand dollar increase or the full four hundred eighty thousand dollar program funding? Well, I thought the four hundred eighty was part of the two fifty is a is a base repeat budget. of last year. So it'd be the, it'd be the, the uh, just an increase of two thirty. Because the, 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 the program's already based there, so it would be fund the FTE, but contingent, the 230 increase uh, contingent of the program development. Okay, is everyone clear on the straw poll? And okay. then we have to let them know what 
we want them to tell us about. Can I about? do yeah. a friendly amendment to the straw poll as well? That, that the discussion that we have when we release the contingency on the $230,000 also includes a more general discussion of the, the mission of the department so sure. that we can all be on the same page yes. as to yes, what is and is not mission creep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. Does everyone understand the straw poll? Please indicate your, your feelings. Uh, I, Councilor Wharton, did you hear the straw poll? Okay, that's six yes. So that passes six to zero um, to fund. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. We thank got you somewhere. for being patient with thank all you the for questions helping and us. concerns. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you. you. And thank you for presenting that. And I want to put on Rachel. the record, I trust that this administration is working in our best interest and that there are good ingredients here. I just want to make sure that we have a recipe to get what we want out of it. I agree. I think we, I think we got to a good compromise there. Um, all right. Why don't we pivot to sanctioned camping while we still have Council Member Wharton? Does that sound like a reasonable next item? I think Council Member Wharton, I heard you say that you still haven't, don't feel like you have enough question or enough answers to your questions. Do you want to start by restating some of your questions or are there other council members that feel like they can answer Council Member Wharton's questions? And, and I'll remind, I also share some of the questions. Well, I, um, I'm happy to state, I mean, some of the questions I think I would rather discuss offline, um, but I guess I would like a clearer idea on what the money would be going to exactly. Um, like, is it programs? Is it acquiring land? Is it dedicating staff? Is it matching funds? Um, and then if it's for a sanctioned campground that would be in Salt Lake City, like are, are we encouraging by putting money towards it? Are we encouraging a sanctioned campground in Salt Lake City? If it's not for Salt Lake City um, and it's, it's a sanctioned campground that would be outside the city limits, then is it the best use of our residents tax tax funds to pay money to go out to another city um, and if the state homelessness coordinator is not in support of a sanctioned campground um, or at least you know has been uh, I would say if there is support it's been kind of tepid um, why do we think that this this budget allocation will make the difference? Those are my main questions that I have. Thanks, Councilmember Wharton. Do we need a brief five minute recess to I, I think that there's a some information that is trying to be sorted out here. So if we could take a brief five minute recess um, and then we'll get back to Councilmember Wharton's questions. Do you, how much time do we have? How, how much longer do we have you, Councilmember Wharton? Um, I am available until three. Till three? Yeah. Okay, that's plenty of time. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Council members in Salt Lake City, we are back from break. Thanks for allowing us to take that quick break. Uh, grab a bite. And we are back to, I think that we had some questions from Council Member Wharton and. Um, the item that we're discussing right now is a proposed $500,000, currently proposed at $500,000 for funding to augment or supplement um, an outside agency or group running a sanctioned campsite. And I think that the, some of the questions that Councilmember Wharton brought up are things that that, um, that we should we should try and take a stab at. All right, I'm gonna attempt, council member, if I don't, feel free to redirect me. Okay. So, in terms of location, here's what this is. This is not us taking ownership. The administration has made a very good, very accurate policy argument that we do not have a health and human services mandate, that the county and the state do, and that we should not get out of our lane or impede anything that would be a full collaboration between those three levels of government in order to solve this in an efficient, effective way. However, 
our constituents are the ones who bear the brunt of this stress, and we have a disproportionate sense of urgency, particularly those who are experiencing being unsheltered. Therefore, we as the people who represent them should have a shared sense of urgency in catalyzing responses. After meeting with former Senator Niederhauser, he has wonderful plans and he's building great consensus. But most of the city that's experiencing the crisis from home, the unsheltered crisis have been under siege since Operation Rio Grande. When we decentralized with 300 beds short of what we knew we needed at that point, that is when this crisis started. COVID exacerbated it, and we have watched our unsheltered friends and neighbors be, get pushed into situations that are increasingly desperate. We have already had now our second incident of violence between members of the unsheltered community this weekend. Typically speaking, that doesn't happen until later in the summer when it's hotter and resources are scarce. My own neighbors are expressing more compassion fatigue earlier in the year. And it's because this is a wound that has not healed, because those emergency shelters over the winter have not given us enough time to breathe, enough security, and because the threat of abatements hanging over the head of people who are experiencing being homeless is just a constant source of stress. So what this is meant to do is to not push us out of our lane and usurp any other level of government's responsibility. Instead, it's meant to be a catalyst to get this culture of taking care of one another in sustainable ways into the Salt Lake City ecosystem. By using money like this, we can incentivize the public-private partnerships required to activate churches, civic clubs, businesses, to help be a part of solving the problem. No one will be forced to. However, should a church, a civic club, anyone with a little land decide that hosting 10 tents on their property is something they can do, they can come to the city and say, we will be a safe place for these 10 people. Here is our security plan. They don't have to hire security. It can be something as simple as the people who live on site will take two hour shifts throughout the day to make sure there is a general sense of safety. They need to have something like a constituent communication plan. When something goes wrong, who can the neighbors call? What is their recourse for getting help? They, there needs to be a general safety plan. I know we all remember the tragedy of the well-intended, unsanctioned, sanctioned camp a few years ago. How are you going to be sure that the people living here don't die of carbon monoxide poisoning or any of those other things, right? We can put conditions on the money that will then be distributed. We will not be overseeing day-to-day -day operations. It will be for the private entity that has signed on, and guess what? We get to decide what they're signing on to. We can decide what best practices are. I, I have identified a consultant who will help us craft them. And then the only thing we have to do is oversee the distribution of the funds, and then the enforcement should something happen if if the sanitation plan isn't being been adhering to and the neighbors call us and say there's waste in the street right we'll have to do enforcement around those sorts of things right but that is the extent to which we should be doing any sort of program management what this is meant to do is take micro camps this is not a panacea this is to make it better for a few people this is to get a couple people off the street to give them the stability they need to give the neighbors an increasing sense of stability about their neighborhood. I do not favor any geographical restrictions. I favor wherever the partnerships occur, allowing those things to be worked out, although the geography will be a consideration, especially, um, you know, churches kind of will be a carte blanche with this, but, you know, a business, we would have to do some land use kind of concept with it, I'm ima imagining. Um, there are things for legal, of course, to come and flesh out, but this is meant to be catalytic money that helps create the culture and helps us create more immediate responsiveness. I am so proud of the money we've put into long-term affordable housing, but there are two crises 
There is the affordable housing crisis, which we all know is going to take time. Building takes time, you know, supply chain issues, all of that. But we also have the issue of now. We have neighbors, both sheltered and unsheltered, who are living under undue stress because of this crisis, who do not have another two, three years to wait for the other levels of government to get to the point where they can respond to it. This is meant to be a micro response with some relatively small city dollars to a crisis that we have been living with since whenever Operation Rio Grande happened. Okay, I want to, uh, Councilman Puri has a comment, but before we go there, I, I appreciate, Councilman Petro, the, the statements that you just made. I think where, and I'm not, I don't wanna speak for Councilman Wharton, but where that is slightly different than the questions that I still have rolling around in my mind are the specifics of what is this, who could apply for it, is, are we only allowing it to be for camps up to 10, is that a restriction we're putting on the money, like what are the guardrails and the specifics, not the, like there's a beautiful job of saying why this is important, um, but I think it's the question of like how does this money go out, what does that match actually have to look like, are we allowing this in Salt Lake City or requiring it in Salt Lake City or can it be so any of those things? So can we get into some maybe the more actual nuts and bolts that will help answer some of our questions? Yeah, so l let me try to answer some of the questions here and uh, thank you, Councilman Wharton, for being specific about those. And if I miss any of them, please, like, I was trying to, you know, type when you were talking uh, to, to make sure that I address them. Um, location, um, I mean, I, again, I think that this is my... Uh, uh, Hold on, I think no one can hear you. Ultimately, we decide, um, we decide uh, as a council, you know, these things, but it, it was my, my goal that this uh, could happen in Salt Lake or outside of Salt Lake City, and uh, a sanction camping uh, in, in any parts of this valley will help ultimately uh, minimize the unsanctioned campings that we see uh, all over the west side. I mean, I think there is probably one camp by my house that has about uh, 40 tents. Um, there is just two blocks from my house, um, and that's only one out of probably 15 or, or 18 uh, in my district. Um, but um, so I don't think it hurts us uh, if the, the funds are going to outside the city for a sanctioned camping uh, site. Uh, I'm hoping that this is a, 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 each site is meant to be temporary uh, in, in nature. Um, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm just replicating, uh, going back to Denver, replicating some of their successes. Uh, it's in, the, in Denver, they started with six months locations, and they're extending them to a year locations, and I'm hoping that maybe this program will replicate some of that, so that we the, that uh, this these uh, camps tend to be hopefully less than a year long. Uh, hoping I'm hoping that the funds that we allocate, uh, half of them are used for RVs and half of them are used for tents or or any other type of shelter uh, to help us uh, in the overall crisis that we see in the streets. Uh, um, I'm hoping that some of the funds that we allocate are also used to pay for staff uh, in our city uh, to manage these funds uh, and to make sure that the administration has enough, uh, you know, people to to oversee this. Um, I'm hoping that the money can be used for either rent of land or equipment or to buy materials for shelter. Um, Hold on, can we, sorry, you're answering some of the questions, I want to make sure I'm ca catching all the answers. Yeah. You're saying you want half of the money to go to RVs and half to go to tent camping? Yes. Okay. Of the 500000 that's proposed, 250 each is the... Yes, and I... Oh, but, I'm sure you're, that's open to yes, discussion. I, but. Oh, yes, that's up to the discussion, obviously, but I, I'm hoping that we tackle both or trying to incentivize some of those, both of those. Um, uh, and also, and I mentioned that hopefully some of this money is also used for uh, staff. Uh, some of it would be for staffing. Because I'm sure that the administration will need someone to help with this. Um, Councilor Petro, you mentioned security plan and community engagement plan. Is that something we put as a requirement? For this? So I think in, I don't I don't want this to be a competitive grant process. I think it should be an application process, more similar to what we see in EDLF, where if you qualify, you can apply, and funds are available until they're not. And as part of the entire application process, we should have questions addressing 
anything that we would be concerned about public funds being used for. So if you are concerned about uh, fidelity and tracking the money, then we should know what is your plan for reporting back on how the funds were expended. If you're concerned about the security of the people who are living there, then we need to ask what is your security plan. If we are concerned about how they're going to respond to the neighbors wherever they're stationed, we need a neighbor responsiveness plan. Anything that we want to track and enforce around in order to protect both the unsheltered and the neighbors to where they'll be staying needs to be laid out in the grant application. Uh, in terms of whether or not the funds have to be matched, uh, it's really, really common practice when you're a nonprofit in particular to report any requests you have out for money. So, and it usually falls into two categories. You fall into money that you have secured and asks that you have out. So if someone wants $50,000 and they have $10,000 already committed, but they only have $30,000 in asks out, that's a really risky investment for us I because- I didn't follow the math there. So if they're asking for 50, uh -huh. but they only have 10 secured and three, 30 extra in asks, that's risky because you're not going to get all of your asks. You only have 40,000 asks but total, is right? The, what is the requirement that we would be putting we on can, this? We can debate it. It's been proposed as a match. I think I, I love leveraging, so I love matches. I don't know if it has to be a one-to-one -one match, if it's a you know, a, a two-to-one match. I don't know. We, those things, it's, it's like how much is the e-bike rebate? I don't know. We can figure this out. Um, however we would clarify what it is and you can allow people to tell you what else they're doing to stabilize us with funds and decide if this risk feels like one that investing in is worth it for us or if it's too risky. Can I go through my list of requirements? I think I answered most of the questions if you let me finish that list. Okay. Uh, I, um, so as the requirements for the money, I, you know, I, the, the, I'm proposing, we're proposing that uh, the money shall be leveraged, matching funds, you know, to what extent is something that, you know, is up to debate. I mean, I see what the, the if it's my proposal, it's one-to-one -one between private or public funds. Uh, requirements for the money that they abide by all laws, the no distribution of controlled substances, uh, have a security plan, have a waste management plan, have it a hygiene plan, uh, access to clean water and restrooms must be smaller than 30 people, must be temporary uh, less than one year in a given location. Um, that is the frame uh, that I hope uh, you know we can go to. Uh, it is not, and I mean to be again. We it's just so we don't forget that this has been it's a proven concept. We are not reinventing the wheel here. We are uh, trying to replicate something that uh, has been done not very far from us. We are also uh, not trying to take ownership. We are not running the program. We are helping. Uh, some of these smaller camps to, to flourish because the unsanctioned camping is already full-blown uh, in our city uh, and trying to create some order um, uh, out of this, uh, this mess. Uh, so I, I, I hope that I answer many of the questions. I don't know if I miss. Uh, I have a question. Can, it be, can the funds be allocated? Is it only for nonprofits or would these funds be available to other government agencies? I mean, that's something that we can decide. I don't know, uh, uh, you know, and uh, let me, now you remind me of something that Councilman Wharton said. Uh, I, I felt like he maybe had a different uh, conversation with uh, uh, the state coordinator, a homelessness coordinator. That's not the, 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 how would, I would characterize the meeting that we had with him, Victoria and I had that meeting, and uh, Councilmember Valdemoros. Um, he was in generally positive about us doing this. He wasn't, he, I plainly asked him if he thought that we allocating these funds will hurt us with the state or it will mean that we will, this is a Salt Lake City problem and he didn't think so. Um, so he's not, he's, this, he didn't indicate at any given moment that this will hurt us uh, or, or not be in favor. And, uh, he was sincere, in my opinion, about him trying to come up with a solution himself too. Uh, his camps are, he's trying to look for a bigger location and a medium-sized location, but he's str struggling with some of the locations and the fun, uh, uh, that he's finding. But, you know, when we're talking to people on the ground, we find that the, there are organizations that are willing to, to go 
there, and they have the land uh, for smaller, you know, churches. You can remember Valdemoros, uh, P- Petro mentioned churches uh, that are willing to do this, uh, but there is a there is a money problem sometimes, um, and uh, so I'm hoping that that this sort of incentivizes though the, these camps to happen. Okay, council members, uh, Councilmember Wharton, I see your hand. Uh, thanks. Um, so I remember when we um, can't remember if it was last year or the year before we offered up a million dollars to contribute to convert um, something or to any municipality that in Salt Lake County that wanted to try to um, create a, a convert a motel or something like that to provide um, an additional incentive to help with this problem. And I think that, you know, it made sense at the time and because of, that was um, federal emergency relief money um, and we didn't really have another place that we could spend it right away, but it didn't, it didn't cause um, the response that we wanted and it, you know, ultimately it ended up falling back on us again to open another emergency shelter. So, I, you know, again, I don't want to, I don't want to be this to come across as critical, but I a little, I'm left wondering, you know, does this organization out there exist that's going to step forward and say, yeah, for 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 me, you know, five hundred thousand dollars makes the difference, and I'm going to start something. Um, and I'm going to leverage those dollars with my own fundraising, and I'm going to, uh, you know, this is going to be a catalyst to to turn into something that solves long term. I'm 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 left wondering if that entity out there exists. I- mean, meanwhile, what I can see happening is, let's say there's a business that right now is um, abandoned or um, or underutilized or something, and they come to us and say. I would like that, you know, 500,000 and I'm going to let RVs come and, and park on the property. I'm going to let um, people come and camp on the property and I'm going to, um, you know, upgrade my facilities. So there's like a working bathroom um, uh, or, or set of bathrooms. I'm going to make those upgrades. I'm also going to add, um, you know, security devices to my building so that we can secure the premises and and make sure that that's safe. And that's how I'm going to spend the 500,000. And I'm also going to put 500,000 of my own money into updating this, this property. And then, you know, whenever the amount of time is that, that they're required to keep this, they say, okay, great. Now I'm going to, you know, have everybody that was camping here go and I'm going to benefit from the updated security. I'm going to benefit from the updated bathrooms. Um, and you know the taxpayers of Salt Lake City paid half of that, um, and now I don't have any responsibility to these people um, that I've allowed to use my property and camp here um, for the amount of time. You know, I did the bare minimum, I got the money, and I hear what Councilmember Petro is saying that like even that amount of relief um, would make a difference, and I agree that it would, but that. I think we also have to be honest with ourselves that once that shuts down, that's going to create another problem that we don't have a solution for yet. And I don't know what we would do at that point. Does that, so those are the kinds of scenarios that I see playing out with what you guys are proposing. Um, and I, to me, I don't know that that's a, the best use of the taxpayers, $500,000 and B that it's not going to create a problem down the line that is worse or the same as the problem that we have now, but we are five, you know, we're out $500,000. So if, if I'm like not imagining the scenario that that you're thinking of, like help, help me understand that that scenario is a more likely, um, is more likely to become reality than the one that I just sketched out. Again, I, I thank you. I uh, I think obviously 
I mean, maybe it's the sense of urgency I have about this issue is different. Um, but I, it is very important to me, and I, you know, it is Im impacting my community the most. Uh, I will argue, but many parts of the city. Um, and just, just saying that, um, I think that we must try. Uh, and I think that to the issues that you brought up, um, we could potentially make some more requirements and say that, mess, that a percentage of the upgrades have to be temporary, right? I mean, the camps that we see in Denver, I don't know if you had the time to research this uh, at any length, uh, uh, but they are all temporary. Uh, they're all, uh, you know, they have a, a great amount of temporary infrastructure uh, that they put up in all the camps and they take them out and they move out and, and they move them back again. Um, but in my opinion, I think we have to do something uh, because if not, uh, it is uh, my community, I don't know if it has more to give um, on this issue, uh, not only for those that are sheltered, but for those unsheltered. And I, I, uh, to answer the question about if there is this organization, if, if you know, there is. Um, I mean, I, you know, we have them communicating with us. Uh, in this council meeting to come into this uh, to to share thoughts and public meetings uh, the the Unshelter Utah have expressed uh, interest on in this in public meeting here uh, uh, the other organization uh, the Nomad Alliance have come to this council and share the same thought to all of us in public uh, st telling us to to help them uh, have sanctioned camping in our city. So uh, I believe that there's other organizations out there that they are interested in, in helping the community uh, find a better solution because what we have right now is not working out. And uh, I'll capitalize on that. If tomorrow the state had the right piece of property and all the funding they needed, we wouldn't have the provider to administer that. It, it just doesn't exist. This is a new model for us. This would actually be essentially workforce development for this by instead of going in, like I, I have never in my conceptualization considered that one entity would take all half million. It is literally not designed for that. It's designed for small, and, and for me, small is definitely less than 20. I think 10 feels like my right number, but you know, we could, depending on staffing, we could be negotiable. But it literally should be a proving ground and a testing ground for us to take small cases, test things out, make sure that we are basing them on best practices, but also refine so that we don't end up in another situation where we open HRCs with no idea how it's gonna impact the community. This will actually prepare us for what the state is doing because we will be growing providers who know how to provide this unique level of care and administer this in ways that are healthy. I think the question I have is, to the degree that we scrutinized the previous discussion, the, the program funding for incentives for e-bikes, I think there are legitimate policy questions that we have that are not yet answered, that we, um, so we put that in a holding account. Is Are you proposing that this is a similar thing, or do you feel like the questions are answered enough to say, put this out and then like oh, we what would, department? We in have the so much work, and and the council like, would have to stand alongside. What does that What does that path look like in order for us to? What happens between tomorrow? If say we adopt this, what happens between tomorrow and when that check first check goes out the door to whatever service provider to make sure that this is going to help the situation, not make it worse? We work. We work alongside whoever the administration decides to delegate it to. I imagine it's a Michelle Hoon, Joseph Ramos sort of person. And then we come up with the criteria. And then we decide legislatively as a deliberative body with the administration where safety and efficiency is. The only tool I know of to do that is for us to put that as a contingent fund. Right. I'm fine. I, right. You have zero Mr. Yeah. resistance. Mr. Chair, I, I just wanted to okay. shed some light. I think at least three of us are feeling this urgency um, as we hear from our constituents, but we see it with our own eyes what's happening on the ground. And we, and, and I know Council Member Pet, um, Puy has been talking about this Denver, uh, this Denver example for a long time, which, you know, I could not wrap myself, my head around it until I actually saw it. And the conditions, uh, the dignified conditions where uh, people experiencing homelessness um, are living in, in Denver, I, 
it's definitely what we should be doing at least uh, uh, the least thing that's the least thing we could be doing for unsheltered neighbors because of the situation that they're living right now in our streets so there's a shift of uh, i think of thought at least for me on we we do a lot with the long term but we have to do something now as as soon as possible because we've been in this council at least i've been here for five years and we've done a lot but the day today we haven't and ali tried to explain it to me before and i couldn't understand but now i do and i think um what i expressed to petro and Puy and the mayor was that if we did at least some seed funding even if it's contingent contingent to a program to a more developed program at least it shows that we are looking seriously into another solution in our toolbox, another tool, which we haven't had. And we are waiting, of course, for, you know, for the state. And, they, and Wayne Either Houses has been doing like a lot and great progress. But what if you know, it takes longer than what we were hoping for? What if this day-to-day -day solution or more immediate solution takes another five years? Are we policymakers willing to wait another five years to help people um, you know, get out of the living situation that they're in right now. So I think that's what um, at least I'm getting to. It's like, can we um, put some money, seed money into this hope and wish and, you know, and being proactive about, okay, if somebody cannot get it done, can we get it done sooner than another four years? So, yeah, it needs a lot of fleshing out because I don't want to reinvent the wheel, to be honest with you. I know Denver um, has a different situation in the, in the sense of how the government works and their county, city. I mean, they have a whole thing that it, it works out for them. But I feel like we can learn and we can take some of those ideas. Whatever that, that is, we need, to, we need to look into it more um, deeper. And then there are other examples that Wayne Niederhaus has told us about. I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but I want like faster solutions for people that are experiencing homelessness right now in the streets of Salt Lake City, where we can all see the horrible situation that they're in. I've been cleaning streets and people are living with rodents and roaches with a lot of um, trash around them. And I don't think that's very um, humane in my opinion. Going into a camp sanction, that, that is definitely more humane than what we see right now. So, Mr. Okay. Chair, um, yes. just to share, some of the successes that I learned from the Denver program. Um, more, the majority of the uh, of the uh, of those that live in the in the, in the camps end up uh, moving along. Um, they have the sense of uh, safety has helped them uh, move along. Uh, and great great majority, they are able to find jobs and get their lives. Uh, in, in the right path, um, it is a big deal. Uh, they have, uh, they're very happy about you know the successes. Even communities that they were worried about uh, having sanctioned camping, uh, and you know I'm in close contact with one of the council members in Denver quite often. Uh, he told me throughout the process uh, how hard it was to get it going, uh, and he got literally thousands of emails t telling him not to do this. And most of the uh, when the camp moved away from this neighborhood, uh, many of the neighbors that emailed him first to tell him not to do it are emailing him, can you have them back uh, to, in, our, in, our, in our part of town? So I, um, I know that this is a, is a, is a new concept for us, uh, but we, we, we have a duty to try. Um, I, uh, I feel I like that's my place now. Uh, I want to be cognizant to, of Councilmember Wharton's time. To your to your to your question very quickly, uh, I'm okay putting this money on a holding okay. account. I feel like that is there's a lot of questions to be answered. I'm okay to find any common ground. Councilmember Dugan, before I propose something, do you have uh, anything to add? Oh, I didn't see his hand. Do you? Did you have your hand up, Chris? And Councilmember Wharton, before he leaves. Oh. Um, I, I understand the urgency and the, and the immediacy and the fatigue. I mean, there's a there's also a camp two blocks from my house. It's one of the biggest, most established camps, and I see people walking to it every night. Um, when I come home, I see people walking from it every morning when I leave. I I understand that, and my the residents that I have around my house feel that emergency too. My question is, is if if this was you know ten. If we're willing to, to say that 
you know, 10 people for a year or two years would be a success. Why don't we just rent 10 apartments and give those to 10 um, families that are either in shelter or that are camping and, and use an existing program that would, you know, go and provide um, and or require them to do um, day services or something in addition to that. Like, does that, does that make sense? I'm not saying that we should do that, but I'm just saying like, if the urgency is that we need to do something now and we need to tell, and that any amount of relief will help, um, why is, is, is this the best use of the 500,000? And, and again, like I wanted, to, like, I want this to, I, I want the answer to be here's why here's the organization that's going to do it, or here's several organizations that are going to do it and are capable of doing it. I mean, I understand Nomad Alliance is willing to say they're going to be there and, and provide the support that they provide, but but they don't provide security. They don't provide mental health services, in, in, at least in a licensed capacity, as far as I'm aware. Um, it's more of a community-based um, service um, than a professional service. Um, and, and where are some potential um, landowners that are that are interested where this would make the difference? And I understand it might be hard to name that in a public meeting because maybe, you know, they don't want, and, and that's why I suggested having the conversation offline, but um, I, I, I don't know how to, to better explain that, um, that I hear everything that you're saying. I don't disagree with anything that you're saying, but I don't, for me, there are still just all of these questions that haven't been answered because I don't, I, I don't see, I don't get the vision. That's the, I think the biggest part is I, you, you, it feels like, um, council member Petro and council member Puy that you have a vision in your mind that, that I just can't see. And that's what I need to see is like, how to, where I think Councilmember uh, Mono was getting to this too. Like when the checks go out, who are they going to? What are we getting in return for the checks? Um, how much are we getting? And, and who are these people that are going to come forward? I want to believe that they're out there too. But I just don't. My experience tells me when we've tried to offer up money to this before and say we're willing to give up a lot of our taxpayers' money and not, not insignificant amount. Um, if someone will partner with us, that we put out the call and nobody picked up. That, that's Council, fair. Councilor Dugan, thank you. I appreciate the, the comments there from, from all parties here, uh, and I appreciate the uh, discussion on the, uh, the vision and the uh, ideas here. And I, I, uh, I have the same similar concerns, uh, Councilman Wharton, on, uh, that, you, that you just mentioned, but I think part of this contingency and part of that uh, future motion, movement will uh, have to answer those questions before we do allot the money. So we talked about security, cleanup, staffing, matching levels, hygiene, zoning, locations, all that stuff. Who's going to run it? Where's the checks going to go out? I think that all has to be baked in to the, to the problem or into the, uh, the policy and the solution. But we need to, I think the funding we need to appropriate the funding so that, that we can do that portion of it so then we can allocate the funding after that. So I'm, 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 yes. uh, I'm in favor of the contingency so that we can answer all these questions and have this uh, solution baked as much as we can so that we can immediately uh, take uh, action. So I'm hearing a compromise, I think, that they're... I'm fine with the contingency. Yeah. Okay. So... Um... I just want to say I hear you. I understand the urgency, and I, I think this is something. Um, I didn't go to Denver and see it with my own eyes like some of you did, so I don't know exactly what that model looks like. Or I've seen pictures. I, I didn't experience it myself, but I do see enough of the vision that I'm willing to put that five hundred thousand dollars set aside out of our budget, hold on to it, say we're not going to use this for anything else, here's this money, but I do want a little bit more discussion. So I will straw poll that we put the $500,000 for sanctioned camping and or sanctioned RV parking 
into a holding account pending further discussion between us and with the administration before and it would require a future council vote to release it. Right. Is that clear? I, I'm definitely okay with that. Okay, Thanks. so that's a six to zero. Right. Thank you. And can you guys take one day, just fly in and fly back? <laughs> I, it, it I literally drive Denver. Again. No, it takes uh, too right. long. Well, I, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like a half uh, an hour flight. <laughs> Go. I also, no, it's not. It's not. If you were saying we could build what they have in Denver for five hundred thousand dollars, I'd be like, let's do it. But that's we're at, we're talking about something in between Denver and and nothing, right? We're talking about something that leads to someday the Denver thing, and that's I don't need to be sold on Denver. I get it. I I. I that's not where my questions are coming from. Or maybe we just so I don't think a trip to Denver would be helpful for me. It's that I need to see there's this stepping stone in between this model and what we have. And that stepping stone is quite expensive. I need to see what it looks like. And what do, and, yeah. And I think whatever, in the meantime, whatever information we can get about the Denver model, like how much did it actually cost and where did all those funds come from? Because like maybe it is something that we could fully purchase for seven hundred thousand dollars. Dedicated funding source for homelessness that was approved by their voters. Can so we, can we also acknowledge that our homelessness people who provide services to our unsheltered neighbors are doing so on shoestring budgets and having to hunt for the people that they serve on a regular basis, which is an expenditure of time, energy, and resources that is exponential. We actually could be supplementing what they're already doing and not having to replicate entire budgets. We could have several throughout the city of 10 and take 50, 100 people off the street potentially with this money. The point is we are not subject matter experts, but the subject matter experts have asked for this in our community, and we need to do what we do, which is lead out and advocate for a strategic process, progress in a way that hasn't happened to protect all of our constituents. Thank you all for voting for the contingency, or straw polling for the contingency. I do think that we can make something good here. And I'll, and I'll say I want, I want us to, uh, this to me, though both crises are imminent and critical, this feels like time is more of the essence than even the past thing we we're talking about. So that's on, I guess, the those of us that are that still have questions to to really dig into the questions and, and try and get answers and those of those of us that feel that their questions are answered to help us the rest of us get there as quickly as possible so we, we need to have conversations with each other Mr. Chair, and with the community about this yes uh, Councilor may, may I request that we can designate some research and some fleshing out of maybe a couple of models not just the Denver but I think my NATO also mentioned one in you may know in, our, in Reno, maybe there's an, I can't remember the names, but um, one of our one, uh, analysts gives us some information on what they do and how they do it in terms of the council, like the, you know, the, the, the funding, all of the things that they do and things that apply to us and the things that it doesn't so that we completely understand how those models work and how we can adapt to what we can do. That way, to me, it will be clearer to understand how much, how they do it, what are the laws, the ordinances, the, all of the things that they did. Um, and so which I'm, I, yes, and I'm comfortable saying that we can put some, in the near future, put some council agenda time. I'm not sure that we have the staff capacity right, no, to prepare no, that presentation. No, so it may be a collaboration or it may be an outside agency that can come give us the reason. Maybe that presentation exists somewhere. I don't. I think, I think that um, the. I'm sorry, uh, I have to log off. Bye. Thank sorry, you, Councilman sorry to interrupt. Okay, thanks. The state has done a lot of research into this um, based on um, their efforts to locate a sanctioned campground, and so we could have that as a starting point. Is just to um, request an update from them about their research. But maybe right. we have a, a an update in a council meeting of mm -hmm. here are here's everything that we currently know from right. whoever knows all the things the best. Right. Okay. And, and also, also from an attorney's office that says, and these are the things that we can and we can't do as a city, like as, you know, whatever we have going on for us, these are the things that we could do and these are the things that are absolutely no's unless so, we change X, Y, and Z. A fact finding. Fact yeah, finding, I mean, yeah. Even, even though there are aspects of Denver or other municipalities but, that we are attempting to replicate, this is innovative. It is us attempting to empower people who are already doing work to do it in a new way. So we need legal to tell us a and, lot of and, things. And I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Like things are already happening, good things out there. So there's not a lot. Anyway, All right, I appreciate I that to. conversation. That was bumpy at times, but I feel like we are 
in agreement that this is a something that needs to be explored more. Um, I have no idea what we have not yet gotten to. <laughs> so, Jennifer, can you help us? Yep, absolutely. So I think that the last um, sort of, if I'm thinking of like boxes we have to check before you guys are ready to adopt tomorrow, you spent a lot of um, time talking about some of the ideas that are on this list, this unresolved issues tracking list, but you haven't actually straw polled. Okay. You know, yes, definitely fund this. And um, staff sent around a scenario that funded all of the things that the council requested adding. Um, and we were fortunate that, um, like I mentioned earlier in the meeting, we had uh, additional we had additional judgment levy revenue, we had additional property tax new growth revenue, and we had additional revenue from recaptured CIP projects to allocate towards some of these items. You also straw polled last uh, meeting that you were comfortable going to 13% fund balance level, um, but preferred not to go below it. So in this scenario, it does not spend any fund balance from the general fund. It does spend some fund balance from funding our future, because funding our future is quite far above fund balance. So I don't know. Mr. Chair, if you want me to just go down the list. Yeah, or so let's see. Uh, lines 25 through 29, we've already more or less figured out a solution for. Line 30, we just talked about, and that's $500,000 that will be going into a, a contingent account based on further discussion for sanction camping and or RV parking. Um, I don't know that we, I don't, did we land somewhere on the salary for firefighters? What I heard from council members is, um, and, and we've requested from the attorney's office, and we sent around a draft of a resolution that um, uh, commits or that uh, establishes that the city's policy goal is to be the lead of market. And so we sent around that draft. Um, we've received feedback from some council members. If other council members could let us know by tonight if that draft is okay. Um, we read it real quick. Yeah, I'll pull it up. Um, sorry, just let me find it here. But I'm, I'm understanding that we don't want to in, get in between the union negotiation process. That's an important process, but that we want to make the council policy that we will be top of market for. And it, it's both police and fire. And we'll clarify what top of market means and I, th I think we ask the union negotiation team on both sides to help us get to a point in the next um, MOU openings to figure out a process that keeps us at top of market, whatever that means, however that is amenable to ev all sides. And another way to be careful is for the administration to make that request of the, the union so that we're not doing Yes, that. whatever our lane is, let's stay in it. Okay, I'm sharing the resolution now. Um, I don't know if you want me to read through it or if it's big enough on the screen. Okay. And this would be um, added to your formal meeting agenda to be adopted along with all of the other ordinances that adopt a budget. Can we scroll down just a little bit? Yep. Okay. Oh, and I think, sorry, I think I pulled up one that does not include a technical correction we made on the f years, the fiscal years. So um, in it your mind, is this will be fiscal year 24. Okay. For fiscal year 24 and future years. And can we go down just a little more to the rent end of the therefore P resolves? Firefighters. Paid wages commensurate with or close to the top of market wages paid by public entities for such occupation savings, especially among the state's largest public safety agencies. This resolution shall be effective immediately upon passage. Council members, are you comfortable with that language? Anyone have requested changes to that language? I'm very supportive of this. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I just want to acknowledge the reality that we may be committing ourselves to a tax increase to make this a reality, correct? Yeah, this is a big commitment. This is not. This is. And not it's a not. Small a, yeah, and it's not one that we're making on just ourselves. This is one we're making on behalf of every property owner in Salt Lake City. So. Yes, this is. Does not. A, we have large yeah. apartments, so this is not a small dollar right. amount. But I think it's uh, uh, important that we commit to. Um, well, I feel I'm comfortable 
with this resolution because I feel like it's important. I also feel like it's important that we let the union negotiation process as outlined in, in statute. And I think it's important to let any public tuning in to understand the implications of this as well. If we want the public safety that you all cry out for, this is the cost of that. Yep. Yeah. And I believe in collective bargaining. I believe that this, that we should let that process. Okay. So okay. none of those will be included in this year's budget, but that resolution will be passed with the budget in order to indicate our support in general. Right. Um, where did we get with prosecutors and legal defenders? Are, so they, are we comfortable could, with these numbers, 340 and 122? Uh, yes. But the best inf the numbers best that we have we right can. now. Yep. <laughs> Council members, are we, and then this is included in the set, the tentative balanced it budget. It is. I'm going to, I'm trying to share um, my screen. Sorry, what's scenario one? Oh, gosh, we're all on a different thing. Sorry. Okay. Oh, I'm going to share. I'm, I'm just going to share this and then I'll fill it out as you guys are talking, if that's okay. Yes, let's do that. So that you can kind of see. This is from, this is not scenario because um, you haven't straw pulled any of those. So I will only add things on the screen as you guys uh, include it but you can reference um, what I've printed out in scenario one as a, a guidepost if you want. So Mr. Chair, just, just to clarify, Jennifer, on scenario one that uh, puts us at what percent fund balance? Oh. So um, if everything was exactly the same as we discussed, or as uh, we discussed in scenario one, you'd stay at just, you'd stay at over 13% fund balance in general fund, $700,000 over 13%, and a million over 13% fund balance in funding our future. Okay, thank you. Okay. So. But because, sorry, because fund balance is kind of the balancing number, yeah. if you will, um, we will make that adjustment sort of once you make all your straw polls on the expense yeah. side. Okay, so um, I'm comfortable with 340,000 to prosecutors and 122 to legal defenders, understanding that that is the best information we believe that we have at the time. Does anyone feel differently? I feel like we, can, we need to go with that. Yeah. No. Okay, so that's a straw poll to go with 340 and 122. Indicate your position, Councilman Dugan. Oh, yeah. That's sorry. five to zero, yes. <laughs> okay, what about line 40? Uh, that is uh, information we received after a council member asked about um, what would the dollar amount be to increase wages for seasonal workers in public lands. The uh, seasonal workers did get an increase in the last fiscal year, um, but they did not receive the 5% um, cost of living adjustment. Most seasonal um, are separate from the salary discussions, but with the uh, conversation about retention and attracting um, employees to that department. I'd be supportive of that. Mm -hmm. This is something that they asked for, or is this something initiated by us? My understanding is that it was initiated by, uh, by is, our is, asking is the question. It was initiated by us because they also are still having a problem with uh, keeping... They're, ha they're having difficulty hiring, hiring seasonal workers? Hiring enough okay. seasonal workers. Yeah. Fine. I, I mentioned this too. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so straw right. poll to support the 133 to do... Okay, that's five to zero, yes. And just to orient the green figure at the top is sort of where your net is. Um, when that turns yeah. red, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the hive passes line item, line number 43. That was to add the apparent to the K through 12 teachers in seven, and it was 114. Remember last year we had like over 400,000 trips by it. So I wanted to add the parent. That was the additional cost. Is this for everyone or just K uh, free reduced lunch? No, everyone. K through 12 teachers, staff, and one parent, one parent slash guardian for, for the one year. Uh, and we had great success without the t parent, and now we want to add the parent because we think that would be even. Will we be able to track the number of trips yep. used by? Yeah, UTAs. UTA. Yes, they've tracked data okay. in the yeah. past, and we could ask for that again. And, in the, and the reason why we couldn't really track it against anything before was because we didn't have a, a project before that had anything. They had some high programs, but there wasn't a really good tracking. This would actually 
tell us how many more rides and hits by these impasses. And this is an example of one actually, and I didn't think of it until now, that could be funded out of funding our future. So if you did not want to spend general fund dollars on this, you could spend funding our future um, dollars, which has a more um, flexible fund balance. And a more robust fund balance. A more robust fund balance right now. Jen, as outlined, if we were to say yes to all of these expenses under general fund, we're still maintaining a position above the 13% if we say both. yes. Okay. Yes, and that's okay. because in Just the scenario, I heard that correctly. in the scenario itself, it, it does fund a few of the items from funding our future. Okay. So I would say, I would propose that we fund this at the 114.648 and use funding our future. Yeah, I'm fine with that. On balance. Okay. Uh, Councilman Valdemar, Sir Puy. Uh, okay, that's five to zero, yes. Train crossing safety signs. This is another one that in this scenario, I think it would be appropriate, it could be appropriate to fund out of funding our future. I would love that. Okay, that looks five to zero, yes. How much, how much say do we have which, which intersections get, get this uh, way? You know, <laughs> they're only all, all around my house, I promise. Uh, they just need to be divided in the administration. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Quick action traffic calming another hundred thousand. Wouldn't that also be funding our future appropriate? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think. I, I mean, it, funding our future has public safety as a category and infrastructure as a category. So obviously, you know, there's overlap in those items, um, and I think you could make the argument that it fits in probably either of those categories. We haven't funded traffic calming out of funding our future in the past, but I don't, I, I mean, I think that as we, as that funding source has evolved, it's not that we're unwilling to expand the definitions. It's that we have to just commit to being transparent with the public about, you know, here's what we've added this year and here's the additional things that yeah. those dollars are doing. Why is the funding our future red? Uh, because right now there is not a net of revenue. So uh, there's no item, this this number is what you would spend out of funding our future fund balance. So right now that you're spending zero from funding our future fund balance, and if we stopped right here, I would put in uh, 264,000 being spent from funding our future fund balance. But we're still above the fund threshold balance. that we need to be? Yes, so, okay. so funding our future fund balance right is at, I think, close to 16% right now. Cheers. So you have- 1.945 Sorry, I was million. looking at the wrong sheet to get. <laughs> Yeah, so, so like sheets. in the scenario, yeah. for example, okay. um, Councilmember Petro, the, the scenario needs to spend almost a million dollars from funding our future in order to balance. Okay, so and you it's have not the almost, red I'm worried about. It's when it gets close to like a million, that's when I get nervous. Two million. Or two million. Because okay. you're, you're about two million over your 13% in your funding our future category. Okay, 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 okay. thank you. I would propose that that also comes from fun, funding our future fund I agree. Balance. I'm with you. Um, let me ask the follow up question on this. I remember, and maybe I missed this conversation, uh, but we were going to get an idea of how much, how far 100,000 will go. Yes, um, do we have? in the unresolved issues staff report, uh, transportation gave a pretty detailed um, sorry, so many windows. <laughs> um, page, it was actually one of the items that was in your last version of unresolved issues. So it's not blue. Um, it's in your unresolved issues staff report, but it's on like page five. Yeah. Five. So oh, um, they talk about. It, it, it could fund, so it, it, it has sort of in each category how much $100,000 would fund. I mean, I, I would be more than happy to increase that by another hundred grand if they have the staff to going do that. To, but, uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I will have, hope that we can double that. Okay, let's, uh, can we circle back to this at the end to see where our funding, our future okay. fund balance is to potentially add to that? Okay. Um, but yeah, so $100,000 for sure, but maybe more. Okay. I think that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Right. Uh, 911, 911. call, text, mm -hmm. whatever. And this one um, would be uh, transferred to IMS to manage. One thing that the administration clarified with us after the last discussion is that there's a step that needs to happen before we could implement this, even with the funding, that we have to uh, switch versa term to the CLAB. And oh. I, I understand this much of it, but that that step needs to happen before this could be implemented, but that they're very excited about the possibility. Yeah, and the, the, that step on the cloud is happening regardless. Yes. Um, 
So it's it just it has to happen first. It, yes, and the the chief um, mentioned uh, that uh, their hope that it's happening by the end of the year. Um, okay. But they want to. It will be useful to have these funds allocated so they can uh, implement everything. Okay. So we're confident in this number. Mm-hmm. One forty-five, two twenty-five. Yeah, it's an official formal quote. So yes. And we're confident and is- in the. Or and do we agree on the funding our future as a source for that? Public safety. Yeah. Okay. Drop pull for that. That's a five to zero, yes. Line item 49, increase funding for economic development to partner with smaller nonprofits. I need a refresher on this one. This was raised as an idea. Um, Council member Valdemoros was looking at ways that economic development could um, use partnerships with smaller nonprofits to extend their reach to um, if uh, they're looking for That's ways right. to engage in the community more creatively. Um, I d- we, we got a response from economic development on it in terms of um, what they would do with the money. We could pull that up. Or rather, most you want to. So, yeah, so sometimes I feel like um, w- the economic development does such a good job um, helping, you know, the, str- the stronger or bigger uh, nonprofit that do a massive amount of work and they do it very well so i'm always happy to support that but i thought maybe adding this additional fund to help those that are starting up or that are halfway there but not as strong as this one's could be a good use of our money to help and this is for nonprofits that within the nonprofits mission are supporting economic development right like like the black chamber, black chamber the asian for chamber example the asian like chambers that. there are smaller chambers that are almost there but not as good as perhaps the swasso center that are well established and forgive me because i haven't read economic development's response but did they seem positive that they could um, make, take advantage of this so i just pulled up their response there uh they said th- they provided a number of things that they already do with um some of the smaller nonprofits. Um, they would welcome an opportunity to provide small grants to diverse and ethnic nonprofits that are supporting small businesses. Uh, they don't currently have a grants program that provides support to these entities because uh, because of the funding. Um, these organizations are a very important part of our community. And so to provide small grants so they can inform diverse ethnic businesses about how to work with the city would be a great way to reach all residents and business owners. So it seems like they're generally supportive. Or, yeah. Okay. And this would have to come from general fund, right? Yes. Because that's not fun. Okay. Yeah, and, and we didn't we didn't have it marked last time because if we didn't have the it wasn't part of our discussion before. That's why. It's yeah. Up, so this right? would be in addition to yeah draft scenario one. Councilman Valdemaros, um, I I would support you in that if you want you. to propose that. I would I would like you guys to support me on this one. Thirty thousand dollars for economic development to partner with smaller nonprofits. I'm almost like I'm okay there as long as we, you know, if we go through everything else and we're short of money, that would be one of the. Is this proposed to be one time or an ongoing? I'm thinking one time and then let's think about it next year. If it worked out, we can think about it again. That's a report of how that money was used. Okay. So I'm I'm a yes on that, Uh, Dugan? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's. A note that it's one time. One time. One time. Okay. Blackwater Tank Voucher Program. This looks like we can recapture FY23 dollars. That, that is an option. Um, I do want to flag that there's a related item farther down um, that, let's see. Yes, there's a related item RV on. RV repair. Yeah. Line 62. So if you wanted to increase both the Blackwater Tank Voucher Program and that line item and consider that line item it could be considered in both, but we wanted to let you know that there is ten thousand dollars from the current fiscal year that's available to recapture. So you wouldn't. Ask, it, it's basically like you wouldn't have to find new money for that. We would just put a line item in the budget, basically recapturing that money. That makes sense. What I, did we fund the RV repair at last year? So you, you funded the Blackwater Tank Voucher Program in Budget Amendment Four, I believe, of this current year, which was in January and January Hasn't February-ish. Been <laughs> um, the repair pilot program was actually funded in fiscal year 22. Um, we did some work, but haven't had the time to confirm that that program is truly included in the ongoing operating budget without giving up something else. And so that's why we listed it as a separate item. And that's new from last week. And 100,000 feels a rational number? It is a placeholder. Okay. I'm just going to say that no. <laughs> it's a. <laughs> I would like to have this discussion when we have the discussion of the um, the the RB uh, the RB enforcement 
Uh, I, you know, yeah, there's obviously three regardless. lines that are related. Yeah, because I feel like those three, the RB, the T, the RB enforcement compliant, and obviously the the Blackwater, uh, all of those threes I felt very strongly about. But I felt like if we have a uh, discussion that talks about all of this and what that team will do, it makes a lot more sense. And I, I feel comfortable with the RV compliance team only in so far as we fund the the repairs and Blackwater Tank Voucher program. I agree. So for me, it's an all or nothing. Yeah. The sanctioned camping could help too. We can, um, I mean, we don't have to go in order if you wanted to straw poll those items now. Can we do those all at the same time? Yeah. Councilors, are, we, are you okay jumping to? So we're looking at simultaneously line item 50 61, uh, 61 and 62 yeah. and i think do you do you want to propose this yeah trouble? yeah i would like to propose a, a, a straw uh, vote for those um for the uh line 50 61 and 62 to fund it to the amounts uh indicated in the sheet uh including the recapture of the ten thousand dollars and council member just to a brief clarification in the scenario we had funded the RV compliance team for 10 months of staffing yeah. just given the hiring time yeah. you okay with that yeah, I'm okay yes. With that. yes okay I'm a yes on that that's five to zero yes then that was shorter than I expected that we got through that one really <laughs> okay. fast okay um, and then back up to line 51 okay so why don't we so these are all like okay, lines 51 through 59 are all CIP related. Yes, and then I, I want to, um, let's see, 59. Sorry, my lines are off, so I wonder if, I, oh. if I've if i added a line since 50, <laughs> I printed it no, out, 58, it's possible. Sorry, 59 So 58, is. yeah, so line 58, I would say, is also another placeholder because um, if you find yourself with extra money, um, like if that green number, ha if that green figure has, you know, $40,000 in it or $240,000 in it, you can either let that money drop to fund balance or you could allocate it to CIP to increase the pot beyond what these projects need. So I, I guess where I'm at is so like the 2.5. That's just the, that's just a reference dollar amount you, for all you would, of these things yeah so and in fact it's not um it, 1.9 million is probably the more accurate figure because of impact fees 1.9 million so and that includes this 43,000 of like unidentified 443,000 i i'm comfortable adding money to cip given that it looks like we have money in that i don't want to commit to any of these specific programs today personally I think that um, Councilmember Wharton was um, intending to advocate for I think we're, Sign Nature Peak. I think we're looking at part of this is that for the general fund and the funding of the future was that we were uh, putting these funding into the CIP f for these specific projects like the 53, 54, 56. So, and I understand that. I and I, I can vote. be outvoted, but I'm okay putting the money into CIP. I'm not okay committing to these specific projects yet because I want the time to a have the District Seven Council member seated and have the discussion with in context of the rest of the CIP. So I'm not I'm not yet comfortable saying these five programs are going to get through no matter what in a couple months. But I am comfortable putting the additional money so that we have that flexibility to do so if we decide that's important. Oh, well, I think that's that goes along with all the rest of the. Uh, may have recommended we can always pull those out. So yes, this would be on the this would basically be on the recommended list for CIP programs, just like any other program on the recommended the list. Nuance that I'm hearing in your guys' yeah. position. So maybe I could just clarify, because I think that strategically there's a difference. So what I'm hearing from Council Member Mono is add the money to the pot, and then the council member at the time will need to remember to bring these up so that they're funded. What I'm hearing from Dan or from Councilmember Dugan is have them on the list as recommended for funding so that the assumption is they're funded, although the council can take a different action, obviously, if they change their mind. And that's because that's the way I've been addressing and I think the discussions have been going on is that we would fund them at these levels at this point, but then we still have to approve them in the right. CIP and process. I think, I think that Councilmember Mono yeah. is having maybe just a nuanced right. view of I, that. I, I don't feel like we've had enough discussion for me to be comfortable saying that these are the more important ones than any of the other unfunded I agree. CIP requests. So okay. if I add 
these the amount is a little different because of the Rose Park Lane beautification. Um, maybe Councilmember Petro, could you clarify? Because last week you talked about changing it to just the solar feedback signs and adding D2. And so if I added up that amount, which is 60,000, the Ensign Nature Peak, the Richmond Park Playground, and the other items are funding our future. So it would be 588,000 added to general fund and 644,000 added to funding our future. Is that kind of what you're thinking, Council Member Mono, where you'd have I, a, a kind of equivalent amount, or would you round? What's this line item 58, 433, 135? That's just. Oh, um, that was balancing. That's a balancing number from, the, that, from that specific scenario. So that's not, that's, not a, that's not a number, in a sense, that would cover all of those projects. Okay. So, um, so that was a number in addition to funding all of those CIP projects. Okay, so I, I would say I'd put this in the same category and really probably the same level of importance as line 45, additional quick traffic calming where yes, this amount, but if we have additional, maybe we could think about a little bit more once we've agreed on all the other items. And, and would you want to balances. fund it in the amounts listed there? So like the 588, from general fund and the 644 from funding our future? I guess right now I'm comfortable committing to that as a floor, but once we finish the rest of these things, depending on where we're at with fund, funding our future and general fund fund balance, potentially increasing it a little bit beyond that. Does anyone disagree with that approach? No, I'm good. Okay. okay. I'll flag those to come back if we need to. Per day violation fees. Looks like we this don't one have a has changed a little bit. I think that um, we have morphed it into a legislative intent asking to, and we'll go over legislative intents after we go through this list, um, asking the administration to review putting violation fees into the consolidated fee schedule. Okay. So legislative intent, but no funding in this budget. Right. Anyone disagree with that? Okay. Um, construction mitigation funding and economic development and just to be clear for myself and the public this is not the not signs those are funded in um, in the project budgets themselves this is actual grants that businesses can qualify for if they if they show that they have a construction related loss or l impact but it's direct money to businesses right. that are affected by construction and can demonstrate that effect. Right. Okay, I'm supportive of increasing that. And 300,000 was the figure that economic development they gave estimated. Us that number, right? And this would be in addition to their, okay. Okay, that's that five to zero. You've already straw pulled the next two we items. Did the next two. This one, the next one, 63, line 63, I think, would be funding for a consultant for the granary, to develop an SAA recommendation for the granary district um, with the intent to come back in budget amendment number one and evaluate an FTE need. And will this $60,000 help answer the question of how do we deal with SAA requests outside of the granary as well? So this is just specific to the granary. If any other business districts want, then there's going to have to be another consultant, another $60,000. Yes. And, and this doesn't have the FTE with it. Right. And it's possible that if you, um, if you added the FTE, it would help in those others too. I just hate adding FTEs yeah. with one time money. So, um, my question is then, I, I think I know the answer, but for the record, can we clarify why the granary is more urgent than the rest of the They'd business ask. district? I think that there was a, a request submitted um, several months ago. I think there's also a timeliness aspect of it in terms of the work that the RDA is doing on developing an HTRZ, and it seems that it would be beneficial to know if you okay. were to establish an SAA, how could it align with the and HTRZ because, tool. To my understanding, the businesses have actually gotten their ducks in a line and have this ready and to go is there, more than other business districts have. Is there is any true? way to take 
the FTE and put it under funding our future since they'll be dealing with the infrastructure in these districts? We can we can redefine that like legally, but I don't know that we have to in this case, right? Well, I think I think Council Member Mono's question is fair. Like we're doing this one because yes, Granary is there, but we are woefully unprepared to, to continue to move forward with efficiency and this is a good development strategy historically for it other is. cities that we should be able to take full advantage of i just hate the idea whether it be now or in a future budget amendment of putting an ongoing fte out of general fund money so that's why i was looking and wondering if the funding our future is general fund money. Is, it is, general fund. <laughs> is general fund money it's actually even more reliant on sales tax it's more reliant than on sales tax, the so it regular general fund. It in theory is more it's, volatile. Yeah, yeah. So I, well, mean, uh, I mean, I get what sucks. you're saying, though. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm okay with this. I'm okay supporting this and for the granary. And I just want it to be clear that it's not because we don't like the other business districts or anything like that. It's just that this organization has their, their all their stuff lined up and is ready to go. Yes. But I also do want further discussion about the general of SAAs in our community, in our city, because we no longer just have one business di district, we have several. Well, and I think that um, it would be important to engage with the administration about, because there are two different kinds of SAAs that in my mind, promotional and that in my mind speak to where should that FTE be located in our organization, right? Like if, if they are SAAs that are truly infrastructure based, that are installing improvements in the uh, business district, or if it's um, trash maintenance to yeah. me that feel well and I don't know it might make sense to locate it in economic development but in my mind the SAAs that we have for downtown and the one that's being discussed for Sugar House are much more business focused business promotional focused SAA and so and both are valid and you know and need city help so so um, I guess it sounds like we do this as per the $60,000 for this one specifically and just FTE. give the Im the message to other business districts that the door's not closed for them, but that we need a little more but, work. But if you are opposed to funding an FTE and a budget opening, you should probably tell the administration that. Um, okay, council members. Anyone want to weigh in on that? I'm not ready to approve the FTE right now, so I would rather wait for a budget opening. I, but I know there's some council members that feel really strongly about no FTEs in a budget opening. I feel like this one's an exception. Like we've established the need for it, so it's not like us taking a back door into FTEs. It's just us saying we need a little more time to consider and strategize around it. Okay. No. Okay. I. I think I'm more open to it in general. So, Let's, did we straw poll on that, or did I, uh, the sixty thousand dollars that's proposed on the tracking sheet? Okay. That's five to okay. zero. Yes. Um, the next few items we have already straw polled. So, um, the, the funding ones. for the lifestyle spending account. Come, the funding could come from insurance and risk management. I think there was a sense that the council might need to reconsider funding that program if dollars were not available. So I guess the straw poll now could be, do you want that program or do you want to cut it? Um, there's funding for it. We, the funding available for it in insurance and risk management. Okay, I, and then lines 67 through 71 are things we've already kind of talked about as well, right? Yes. So I propose that we support 66 through 71. Yeah, 72 is slightly different, so. Yeah, not 72 we'll talk about next, right? Okay. 66, is there anyone opposed to 66 through 71? No, we're good. Okay, right, Councilman Peter, you're okay with those? And, um. Okay, so oh. those are all good. Okay, line 72, yeah. Um, we received some information that the amount included in the mayor's recommended budget wasn't quite sufficient to run the municipal election in the coming year. Mm -hmm. We probably won't have the exact amount. Um, the congressional vacancy election is affecting some of that. So um, essentially, we, we, we put in a placeholder um, to evaluate what the true cost of running the election is. Obviously, 
it's not really a discretionary item. This is something that you basically have to fund, but we just wanted to call it out that this is a placeholder and we may be back to you um, in a budget amendment if we get different information. Because there is a federal seat on the ballot, theoretically at the same time, does that mean that we cost share the cost of running the they're election? They're at the same time. They separated. They, they're five, separating them. They, they, I don't know if maybe. They they five, I don't know that it's been decided, right? It's not final. That's certain. <laughs> but <laughs> the legislature is like the proposal is to issue the funding to the counties. And then this funding also would help us have some available if it was necessary, but it also is to put the District 7 term on the ballot. Okay. Thanks, Cindy Lou, City Recorder. So, I mean, understanding that we don't know the final number, then sure, that seems like a good enough guess to me. We just wanted to flag it that if you hear about it again in a budget amendment, that's why. (laughs) May I ask a question related to the elections? Um, In last year, the year before last, the, the administration or uh, elections uh, or the recorder uh, ran some information documents to help people learn about um, ranked choice voting and how that works. Are we doing the same thing? Are we not doing the same thing? There, there's funding in the budget for educational materials. We had a hiccup with some of the voter information inform- being, I think it was, was it that it didn't match up exactly with our understanding of it or... Cindy Lou, I'm looking at Cindy Lou because anyway, yes, there is funding in the budget. Yeah, there was funding allocated in budget amendment six and there is funding allocated currently in the recorder's budget for awareness materials. And we're just updating the dates now to our existingly printed items. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay. Okay. New positions based on our conversation earlier with the sustainability FT. It sounds like there are no positions currently proposed to be removed. That, that's my understanding. The lavender kind of highlights are positions that um, the council asked to flag in case you needed to find budget reductions. But since that fortunately was not the case this year, then we can either go or um, kind of continue. I'm, I'm good with keeping funding, them all. Keeping the, the lavender group. <laughs> to be clear, keeping all of them. Yes. As proposed. As proposed. Okay. The only one that I had a question about was the the sustainability of T, and we already covered that, so I'm we, comfortable with yeah. all of them as well. Right. Okay. So, um, Councilmember Valdemaro, you sorry. side. I don't see. I don't see them. Did can, everybody say yes? Nope. Can we, that's a straw poll. Can oh, we, okay. Can sorry. we indicate our our position on the straw poll to on the keep all of the on the lavenders? Okay. All um, the lavender items plus. Well, I mean, it's all of them, right? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. 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 I'm okay, but next year, you know, if numbers don't look this good, what are we going to do? And are we going to have to cut somewhere else? And if that's okay, like, I hope that all of us are aware mm-hmm. that that might happen and it'll be tough for all of us to we're do it. We're heading towards a tax to increase or a massive slowdown in growth in our, in our staffing. And we have to make everyone aware of that right hmm? so everybody be you know be aware that that may happen next year this council may not want to you know increase taxes or we might have to cut somewhere else so or or we might who knows maybe it will okay. be okay but as council members we always have that worry when we say yes to things especially the ones that are ongoing because we don't know if we're going to get that money next year so it's hard for us to say no now, but it'll be hard next year <laughs> as well when we might have to cut. So anyway, yep. go for it. Okay. Great. So um, those are that's the, all the items, but you'll see that there's a net of 521,000 in oh. the general fund and a negative of 1.1 million in the funding our future. So um, the options with the general fund dollars are either um, reducing the amount of fund balance that you're using to balance the budget. So it would basically be increasing your fund balance. And decreasing our structural deficit. Mm-hmm. Or, or, you could before, allocate, <laughs> or you could add that money to the pot of money that you're adding to CIP 
to um, allow for more flexibility in the CIP discussion. Because right. Can, you are, you oh, are underfunded right. in you're CIP right. this year. There were those two items. There's a CIP and the traffic oh, calming. Oh, and the traffic calming. Thank you. Right. Thank you and, and this that. is funding our future. This 1.153 is we're that much below the 13 percent. No, um, this no. is what you would have to spend from funding our future to balance. And so it would take your funding our future revenue down by that amount. So let but me we have 1.94. Yes. Above 13% in funding yes. our future. Sorry, I put it okay. wrong. So we're still well above 13%. Oh, okay, okay. I was funding our future. All right. We're still above yeah, you're 13%. just under a million dollars over 13%. And to get okay. to 13% in general fund, we have 5.1, 5.5. Five hundred twenty-one thousand plus seven hundred twenty-three thousand. Yes. If if you if we decided want, if we want to go exactly to thirteen percent, yes, it's about no, no, one. Sorry, no. Um, that would just add to your fund balance. So um, that would take you to that could take you to thirteen and a half percent. I'd have to calculate how much it would take but you. Bottom line is we're above thirteen percent. You're above thirteen percent now, and okay. you'd be adding to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's all I need. Um, so there's two items Maybe. up for additional potential additional funding. One being just the CIP in general, and the other being quick traffic calming. Quick action traffic calming. Uh, so between no. funding our future and general fund, we're we've currently added one point one point two million in CIP. All right. Let me go down there. So right now what you have is adding 588,000 in general fund and 644,000 in funding our future. So a total of 1.2, 1, 1, 1, 1,232,000. 1,232, 1,232,000. Um, I would, what if we did this? Let's go to 1.25 and even 1.25 and CIP and then 200 in the twi quick action traffic calming. I'm just throwing that out there. But another 100,000 to traffic calming and another $18,000 to, <laughs> to CIP, CIP, general fund. You might as well do 21 since that's what's, and then we'll just put 300,000 back into the. Okay, so another twenty one thousand six hundred and eighty nine thousand VIP. <laughs> sure. And a hundred thousand to tw quick oh, action traffic calming. Traffic calming, yes. I'm okay with that. Should we? Wait, repeat it again. So we're gonna we're so we're not putting any of the money back in to fund balance. No, we're putting four hundred thousand. We're putting four hundred. Thank you. Okay, that's what. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh yeah. I'm, I, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's five to zero. Trying to find traffic calming. <laughs> it is line forty-five. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so that goes from a hundred to two hundred thousand. Thank you, Darren. And that funds part of the traffic calming from partially from our general fund, partially part from, general, from funding our which future. Which is totally fine. That fills in line with policy. So, are we done? Did so, we do it? No. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. It. Whoops. What did we miss? Um, legislative intents and oh. contingent appropriations. Oh, yeah. There's lots of things. Okay. Um, so, um, Allison, yeah, if you want to sure. share or either way. So this is sort of like speak now or forever hold your peace on the language for legislative intents. I mean, not really, but, but meaning please. If you, <laughs> if you don't bring it up right now, council is going to be really, council staff will be under Well, it, it's just harder we, to make sure that we don't accidentally make a mistake. So this okay. will increase our chances of not Stop accidentally messing up. up. <laughs> We're not done. <laughs> not accidentally messing up. We're not done up. yet. So um, there's nine legislative intents and a few conditional appropriations, if that gives you. And uh, what line are we on in the staff report? So we have updated it while you guys have been talking. Okay. You can follow along in the staff report. I think it's on page two or three where the legislative intents start. Ten. Um, 
the the ones that started on page 10 of the staff report are outdated now. Got it. So the updated ones okay. are in, towards the beginning of the staff report. Pages two and three. Okay, legislative contents and contingent appropriations. It's really the beginning of page three. I mean, the introduction's on page two. <laughs> it's okay. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay. So we also have them up on the screen now. Thank you. So do we want to go through these one by one? How do we, how, Allison, you help us. What, what's the most uh, helpful to you? I'm, I'm just going to type. So either way works for okay. me. Uh, let's go through them. Okay. The first one is about building security. Is the head of the council that the administration prioritize hiring the new safety and security manager FTE proposed for the public services department and returned to the council by the end of 2023 with recommendations for how the building security funds could be used. This is the end of calendar year 2023 or the end of, it can't be fiscal year, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I feel this is very urgent, so. This is a big deal. I, I am supportive of that. Is this the exterior or the it's interior both. stuff that we talked about? I think it's everything, right? Yeah, this person, I mean, the, the goal is that this person will tell us how to prioritize the safety. So yeah. it, will, it could be exterior or interior or all of it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to straw poll all of these, but if anyone feels like they want something changed, then speak up, please. Options for citywide rezoning. Z zoning reevaluation is the intent of the council that the administration prior work plan that outlines options for potential citywide rezoning, citywide zoning improvements. Um, yes. I had a North Point meeting this morning. So uh, important. A North Point. Yes, the North Point small area plan meeting. Can we do this yesterday, please? <laughs> yeah. Um, apprenticeship program incentives. It is the intent of the council to ask the administration to recommend strategies to incentivize an employee who works through the city apprentice program to remain with the city once they are certified. Also a big deal. Yeah. Um, legal defenders. Uh, intent of the council to request the administration shift funding from legal defenders contract to funding our future under the policy umbrella of public safety. With the rationale that these attorneys are an integral piece of the criminal justice system and often connect clients to resources and services to help them recover from addiction or otherwise help them get back on their feet. Discuss with Salt County whether it would be more efficient for the county to manage the full contract with the city, contributing funds towards it. And this was um, Councilmember Fowler raised this as a potential legislative intent. Okay. I don't see a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, pay parity among attorneys. It is the intent of the council of the administration to evaluate pay parity among the attorney's offices, Salt Lake legal defenders, the city prosecutors, and the county prosecutors because this may be longer term issue. The council could ask that the human resources department conduct a more thorough evaluation on this topic and recommend strategies to achieve pay parity over a longer term. I, I would like to make sure that we, there's clarity here that parity between, and you know, much like Councilmember Warren put it, uh, all the attorneys that are in the same courtroom uh, yes. as a first goal. And then as a second goal and a separate uh, parity between agencies, you know, so county versus yep. city. Okay, so we want to reword this a little bit yeah. to say our first priority is parity between attorneys on both sides of the courtroom in the same courtroom. And second goal, uh, this, the next priority would be to make sure that those salaries are competitive Com and meet the market or something like that. Yeah. Does that give you enough, Allison? Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll pause while you. Um, I'm going to jump to the next one while you're typing golf fee structures. The intent of the council is to ask the administration to evaluate developing a program for the golf division that could provide discounted rates to reduce financial barriers for city residents. Perry to be doing agencies, uh, you know, this will count, you know, county and city. County, state, and city. 
Sorry. Is agency the right word when we're talking about levels of a court? I mean, we're trying to compare the county level. County right? versus municipal versus state. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. So everyone take a look at what the intent of the council that the administration evaluate pay parity among city attorneys. The first priority is that the attorneys on both sides of the courtroom have pay parity. Second would be parity among agencies. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Okay. I'm, I'm good with the golf one. Um, if anything, I would add maybe an emphasis that the golf one be uh, residents with limited financial resources so that golf can not be only for the wealthy. To reduce financial space for city residents, especially those with limited financial resources. Does that sound okay to everyone? I mean, I feel like that's the whole point of this. Sorry, we can't hear you. Mike. It might just be easier to just make everybody who has a city residence because that's an added burden for the person who's, who's going to pay for a ticket to show that he's... So I would just give mm, to everybody. Yeah, I can see that. But it's a legislative intent, so I think asking oh. them to look at it at both levels and then come back. It is an intent, so you're right. Come back with a, yeah. we can't really do that because of it, the yeah. overhead. and it's, over, it's overly burdensome for savings. Okay. Evaluation efficiency of all the, is it the council to ask administration to evaluate all response teams that may be considered part of the diverse, whether there are opportunities for efficiency or streamlining. Okay. I'm okay with that. All right. I'm not hearing any. We need the role clarity really, really emphasized in this. So, wait, role it's, clarity it's for seven or number eight? Still number seven. seven. It's listed out really well in our packet right now. But, um, like, I think that's before we can even talk about metrics for success. I still can't tell you what the difference between some of these things are. Wait, where's role clarity? Uh, in our packet on number nine, uh, B1. <coughs> so, well, yeah. We're in a, you're are, in a different spot yeah. than us. Page, three. page 11. We're on page, page 11 three. is out of page date. Page old. Well, can we go back to this old one then of what we're talking about here? I just streamlined the language. <laughs> you did a really good job on this one. That's Eight. Um, so if you look at 11, you can see what Victoria's Yeah. You're saying number nine, B. Yep. Number one under B. Okay. So the the line you would like added is clarify roles of each team and how a call for service is routed from one team to another and how calls from the public are routed. Yes. Thank you. I'm okay adding that in. And sorry, I'm not seeing that on page eleven. Uh, B B point gotcha. I. Thank you. So, so how do we work that into the language, Councilmember Petro? Okay. Um, including clarity on dispatch and whether or if the public is intended to contact any teams directly comma, how resources are deployed, comma, and, clar and clarify roles of each team, blah, blah, blah. Does that, is that a sentence? What if we let Allison make that into a... Let's see if that's a sentence. <laughs> Councilmember Petro, does this accomplish your goal for number seven? It is the intent of the council to ask the administration to evaluate all response teams that may be considered part of a diversified response to public safety, establish common metrics, and evaluate whether there are opportunities for efficiencies or streamlining, including clarity on dispatch, and whether or if the public is intended to contact any teams directly, how resources are deployed, 
and how resources are deployed in addition to clarifying roles of each team and how a call for service is routed from one team to another and how calls from the public are routed. I feel like it's a little redundant, but Good. Okay. The, the intent is clear enough. <laughs> will you, Councilman Peter, will you work with Allison to make sure that this language I'm, works with? I'm fine with it as it is. If you want it to be less wordy, I'm going to need someone else to do the stripping out. Okay. So remove that last sentence or leave it? You, you I want just the last sentence in, right? Yeah, I think so, because I don't want to arbitrarily create metrics just to create them. I want that role clarity to lead off what metrics are created. Okay. Okay, number eight, department role clarity and ordinance. It is the intent of the council to ask the attorney's office to propose updates to the city's code that define and discuss that defines and discusses the respective roles of city departments. This review should include, but not be limited to, the sustainability and economic development and public lands departments. Per council discussion, sustainability is the priority. Um, I don't remember the reason to include public lands in that. Can someone remind me? I think me? the reason is just that it's a recently formed de department. And it's, it has a little bit less definition than some of the others, but it's not, I mean, okay. you, there's no, you don't have to have that in there. Um, the other thing is that the city attorney's office can do the ordinance and they may have some suggestions, but there's a lot of policy for the council and the mayor's uh, administration to discuss too. Okay, so the reason to include public lands is can be- Chair, yeah. uh, the, I, if, we, if we remember the conversation about the FTE uh, related to um, events, uh, the uh, public lands uh, was yep. uh, requesting and some of some of the discussions here were like, is this the role of public lands or not? So I feel like maybe it's useful to, to just define okay. it. Uh, then I'm all right with that. Okay, number nine, airport air quality transit investment. The city council formally requests that the airport submit a REN plan and funding proposal if needed to the council regarding plans to encourage the f and facilitate transit, ride sharing, and other transportation options for employees. The council requests that the plan include milestones and metrics to measure progress on the airport's investment in mitigating air quality impact of private vehicle trips to the airport and the environmental impact of the addition of parking lot addition of parking lot impervious surface to accommodate those vehicle trips efforts to support and encourage transit opportunities for the traveling public are also encouraged by the council being the city council recognizes the airport makes strong environmental investments in its construction and operations and, and i would uh i really want to push the airport on a, on a number of these fronts and i also want to uh, maybe even include uh looking at possible funding of additional uta routes to the airport to like we can reduce the number of traffic going out to the airport from um, either residents missions. or uh employees because it employs a lot of people every day okay so you want U uta to be added in here somewhere uh, just in, well, the, would the airport look at uh, the possibilities of funding additional UTA routes to the airport? What would it cost to add routes, and what would be the benefit of adding those routes to the airport? Okay, frequency we... frequency routes because right now they have 24-hour service, so they need routes 24 hours. Why are we targeting just employees with this? Those... No, no, it's no, it's not targeting. I'm not targeting employees. I'm targeting... It's in. It says in here, um, in the first sentence. It says, formally requests, blah, 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 regarding plans, ride sharing, and other transportation options for employees. Oh, I would say employees. You're right. Good thing. I would say employees, employees and, and passengers. And, and I passengers. think passengers no. need to take priority. We, we have people who are living I think, at or I think, below median income with most of the jobs there. I They're think, the well, that, that would be so the employee. I, we could add in, uh, uh, passengers or uh, yeah, customers. Oh, sorry. Can I add a little? Yeah, after? go ahead, Cindy. The reason when we were editing it as staff, we put uh, the emphasis on on employees because that's what the um, airport has the most influence over, and also it's a very low hanging fruit. They have uh, there's a barrier about uh, getting light rail 
uh, there uh, easily. And so when we were first talking about this, they were they kept focusing on that as opposed to all the things that could be done. So we put um, passengers in the latter part of the list, but emphasize the employees up front. We can switch it, though. But, but also I think the we need to. I'm really getting stressed out that the environment we're all dependent on to live keeps being put at odds with the quality of life for people who are living below median income during these I, budget debates, and we we can't keep doing that. We will all die. I think it's fair to say there's a lot of employees at the airport that are probably living at or below Thousand, median income. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about the people working at the concessions who are the ones who need this parking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what this is. Yeah, yeah. Because that, right. those, and those shifts are lined up to where they get off of work too late for the last train. Right. train. And that's, that's, that's all part of it. They're the ones most dependent on this and who have the most at risk if we over legislate so, this. I, I, yeah, I think we're. I think my the, on the, 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 the I think we're all saying the same thing. The employees means the people that work out in the airport, not just the ones who work have a. Uh, they have a badge. They all, they all have a badge because they all have a security badge. But that's and part of that is because they do work weird hours. They don't have bus transportation. That's why I'm asking about the additional routes because right now you can't take a bus both ways because the services doesn't run after midnight or something of that nature. Yeah. Can can this uh, written plan include? Um, you know, a share strategy uh, with the state because in the last conversations we had with, with the, you know, the airport, uh, you know, there is this, there is multi-agencies involved here, right? This is no, the airport by itself cannot, just doesn't control the routes and whatnot, right? So I, I wonder if there is a way of adding this about a share strategy. I, I, I want us to have an actual share strategy with the airport regarding public transportation. Then we can say, okay, the airport and us are loving the state together on this because we both have a shared document that says these are our priorities. And right now I'm not sure we have that in a written place um, regarding to public transportation. So I would like to include here um, a little bit about that um, since we're going into into that. And every time that we talk to the airport, we talked about parking and public transportation. So can we uh, ask uh, that this document includes this share vision about public transportation uh, so we can f find our common ground and then we can lobby the state. Yeah, I guess it'd be some way to, it could be some way to add that in the written plan because uh, somehow have the intent in the, in the plan. I mean, it's really the airport gives us its plan. They could add the that portion of it to it. I'm not sure if you need to be that specific in this or not, but maybe. I, what if we're more general altogether in this and just say they need to submit, we would, we are asking that the airport submit a written plan and funding proposal if necessary to the council regarding plans to encourage and facilitate transit ride, transit ride sharing and other transportation options, period. Yeah, I guess it's the other one is implied, right? We want to minimize air quality impacts and private vehicle trips. So we, yeah, I'm okay with that as long as we are cognizant that or maybe we the say, airport yeah. will, it most likely will say what they've been telling us, which is... And other transportation options that are... Other transportation options... Um, I don't know. If you want to be sure, I mean, that would that would be very general. You can either all be very... airport users. <laughs> you could be very specific. Yeah, all port, airport users. You could be very specific, or you could say general what you just said. And other transportation options else. which don't rely on single passenger vehicles, which are not reliant. I think we're, yeah, I think we're on the same yeah. page. Really. Yeah. The only thing that I wanted to add is making sure that we are not saying airport come up with a solution for public transportation when they already told us and we already know that UTA is a big piece of this and, equation. And, and we, I want okay, airport, I get it, I get it. I want the airport and us to be on the same page to say. Okay, we're okay. going to you to a Maybe that, So we want more details in there. We don't maybe want Maybe we general. add to the next where it says the council requests the plan include milestones and metrics to measure progress. Maybe we put something in there about um, a shared advocacy strategy, something like that in there. 
who are Underst going to... Yeah, understanding that we all have to lobby the state in UTA in order for this to happen. And I just want to insert that the airport did send us a document this afternoon that lists um, some of the efforts that they are making to date. So they already have a start on it. That's nice. So they're listening. So they're on board with this also, but yeah. Well, we haven't read the document yet. I haven't read the document yeah. yet, so who knows what it says. So do you want and shared ad advocacy at the end of the sentence as reflected we're, on we're the board? We're more to it, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with anything that's in there, so I think it's fine. Well, that would be it for legislative intents, unless there are others. Okay, and we have to talk about contingent budget appropriations. Okay, last, last, final any last call for any changes on legislative intents um, after sorry. this there's no more additions or changes. questions do we talk yeah. about the the um, the audits and or that's just an ongoing legislative an ongoing intent one. okay mm -hmm. that was already yeah we yeah already. so previous years legislative intent so that discussion you had with Allison what was it last meeting would that stands a, separate from okay. these are new legislative new intents. okay got it thanks Thanks, Councilmember Valdemar. So that help, helps clarify. And so, on the contingent appropriations, um, we're still working on the trails contingency. Uh, the second one on this list is Sorry, basically where, copied from every year since funding our future was adopted. Where so, is this list? Um, you can see it up on the board. So this is a new version that has been edited while we were okay, meeting. Just look at the screen. So just look at the screen. <laughs> Sorry. This is how we have to do things when we have to do them quickly. <laughs> Contingent appropriations for trails. So the ones for trails is we, what we discussed with Councilmember Wharton. Um, we have started a dialogue with uh, the administration on a contingent appropriation. We're a little bit crunched for time. This needs to be added to the budget adoption ordinance. And so it's so uh, late. So tonight, and hopefully the attorney's office is ready to turn that around really quickly, and I'm looking at Katie and apologizing. So we all need to <laughs> apologize to staff. <laughs> Just to the attorneys, right? So, um, well, and public land. So Kristen, um, Director Riker, said that she would um, work on it, and I think that we're working on some of the keywords from Councilmember Wharton as well. The Funding Our Future contingency has been since the um, funding our future sales tax was adopted and this is just an illustration that unless the contingency is adopted every year it doesn't apply to that current year I see this is ba this is very much in line with how the administration has been running these funds but we just want to ensure every year that and the parks that's the maintenance has been added to this yes okay um, the air quality incentive program and the sanctioned camping grant fund and let's remove rda from that just because we i think we're going to keep the sanctioned camping grant fund in non-departmental um just so that it sticks out there but yeah i don't think um, it should be an rda so let's see if you guys want to read through that expand, language okay two hundred thirty thousand dollars of new ongoing funding for an expanded air quality incentive program Oh, get rid of the. Yeah. Is it really new? It I is new. This, I thought it was recaptured from what we were doing before. Two hundred and fifty is ongoing. Continued. And two thirty is the, yeah, new? Okay. the delta. That's low income qualification guidelines, prioritization criteria, maximum awards, binds, and type, and other details. Council approval of the program policy and goals. Yep, I'm okay with that. 500,000 for sanctioned camping, RV parking into a holding account pending future discussion. Are you talking about the air quality incentives? Yeah. Okay. Um, where do you want to put the word equity? Qualification guidelines, prioritization criteria, maximum award. Somewhere in that. In um, what do you want to add? I'm sorry. Economic equity, equity considerations, yeah. like after the maximum awards by incentive type, comma, uh, equity considerations, comma, and, comma other, and details. other details. Yeah. That's a perfect place. Thank you. Yep, I'm I'm good with that. Thanks, Councilmember Pui. Okay, anyone other changes to number three? I'm good with it. Mm -mm. Sanctioned camping grant fund, five hundred thousand dollars for sanctioned camping slash RV parking. Should we change this to sanctioned camping catalytic 
grant so that people aren't confused of the fact that we do not intend to administer from the city a sanctioned camp? I like that clarification. Can we call it a catalytic grant fund? We can call it whatever we want. I feel like that adds a little more clarification to what the grant is meant to be, not to, conf you know. We're not, we're not trying to set one up. We're trying to incentivize other people okay. to do their part. Yeah. Fine. Grant fund, great. Slash RV parking into a whole land count pending future discussions of administration, in fact, finding on best practices from other cities. I have no edits. Sorry? I have no edits. Does any other council member have any edits? Mm -hmm. Fact finding. And I mean, is it worth adding? So I just don't want just to hear about best practices from other cities. I want to hear about the best practices plus how it applies with our own laws and regulations so i want all of it because i don't i don't want to wait um we got the best practices but then we wait another year to figure out how we do it like pending future discussion like with administration comma fact finding on best practices from other cities comma and how this local unique local implementation um, concerns local and, state, our state and local right. and state uh, uh and issues specific to our locality and state. Back funding from other cities and local and issues. And issues and laws and conditions specific to, okay, wait, fact finding on best practices from other cities and local and state. Regulations, considerations, considerations, regulations. Considerations will like be a very generic way of saying all that. Okay. Local and state considerations. Yeah. Does state get capitalized? Depends on whether you're asking Whitney or me. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, there's been a debate going. <laughs> what about local? <laughs> but I local think that does not, but state might. Well, city. Okay. <laughs> what about city? <laughs> Local. That was local, local, okay. So I think that's great. I think that accomplishes what... Okay, mentioned. great. Okay. Council members, any other changes to that? And that's the final contingent appropriation. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, we'll hope, we'll hope to have the trails contingency ready later tonight, right? Sure. <laughs> so... Um, I think in the meantime, you can send this language to the attorney's office, and at least they can get started on incorporating some of the other ones. Just to be clear, so that we're not putting undue burden on staff, the trails contingency language will come towards us. We need to look at it today if anyone is really concerned about the exact wording on that, because yes, if we'll, we get to the meeting tomorrow, right. that's too late for staff to... Yeah, I, th I think that that's accurate. And what we'll do is we'll send it to Council Member Wharton, who's obviously as mostly invested in it, so um, and make sure he's okay with it. Okay, but other council members take a look tonight at some point in some communication from staff somewhere. And we'll text um, you guys to draw your attention to it in email. Remind, send us an email, and then remind us. To and look if you at don't get a text tonight, it means we're still working on it, and we'll text you in the morning. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> no closed session today, so I think with that we are adjourned. Good job, Darren. Pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steph.